Bryce and race on to the field here for the 2014 season opener. First, though, we invite you to stay tuned as we will return with the opening kick between Bucknell and VMI. This is Bucknell football from Learfield Sports. Well, Bucknell saw VMI win the opening toss, and they elected to receive, so they'll be receiving left to right. Here comes Maurer as he approaches the ball. Ladies and gentlemen, it's game time on the Bison Sports Network. Ball hops at the one, gonna be taken by Stout. As he comes across the field, is five, tripped up as he'll cross the 10 and be dropped at the 11 yard line. At the bottom of the pile, stumbling his way towards the near side of the field for the Bison on the tackle. It's going to be Brett Berg, a Danville product, who is gonna get a lot of playing time this year. VMI will start out first and 10, moving left to right at their own well, Doug, in high school, Brent was one of those guys that didn't really grow into himself and year after year after year, and they were kind of worried about playing him in his younger years in high school because he just wasn't that big. Well, I'll tell you what, you look at him today, he looks like two different people. He's been in the weight room a little bit. Strength and conditioning can do a number on, uh, can do a number on a body and make it really solid as he is now. Al Cobb getting the start here today, the redshirt freshman. Single setback's going to be Watts, some seven yards deep. In motion, it's going to be Sanders. Here comes a handoff to Watts. He's going to be stood up and dropped for a loss of one. As he tried to go off left guard, there comes the guy you mentioned before, Evan Byers, who had 19 tackles against the Cadets in game number 11 last season. There's a reason. He is a beast. There's just no other way to say it on defense. I mean, that's why he's the Sports Network preseason third team All-American, and he might have gotten shortchanged. Just underway here in the second offensive play of the game. VMI in their road white jerseys, the gold bands, the gold helmets, moving left to right here at the 11. Bucknell with the 4-2-5 defense, three wide outs, two to the left side. Cobb goes stretch handoff to the boundary right, breaking free as Watkins as he finds a way to get up to the 20-yard line before being dropped by Matt Steinbeck, the free safety for Bucknell at the 20. It'll be a manageable third and two for VMI. You know, that's using your blocks. I mean, right there, Watts saw all the uh, uh, linemen coming out to the right-hand side. He snuck in. That ball was supposed to go a little bit wider. He snuck in right around the hash marks and made Steinbeck, the safety, make the tackle. And that could very well have been a touchdown saving tackle because there wasn't anybody behind him. Now Cobb is going to go into the shotgun on third and two. He'll have Watts to his right. Hand off to Watts. Watts finds some room as he's going to carry it for a first down. Past the 22 of VMI to the 23. Byers in on the stop. And also Clay Yule, but a pretty good first series here for VMI. Well, that's a down series play. Everybody down blocks, but instead of the guard coming in to kick out the defensive end or the outside linebacker, it's the tight end that comes down and makes it. So you have literally one extra blocker on that running play, and that's exactly what they needed to get the first down. Buckdell held VMI down to uh, under 100 yards total in the game last year. Here comes Cobb back under his center, Doucette. He'll have Watkins right, he'll play action to him, roll left, throw it in the flat. It's gonna be caught over in the far side, I should say, and getting it up to the 20, 31, 32 yard line is going to be Doug Burton, the redshirt senior at 25 catches a year ago. He'll get his first here today. Cobb on his first career pass, completes it for about seven. All the flow that time, and again, we talk about a young quarterback making sure he's in situations that make sense and that he can succeed. All the flow moves to the right-hand side. It looks like a sweep play. They fake the sweep, they swing the quarterback around. There's literally only three guys on the left side of the field, and that's including the quarterback and receiver. Second and three, VMI, no score, clock at 1241 of the first quarter at the 31 of VMI. Here's Cobb with a delay handoff to Watkins, and Watkins is going to get hit as he'll cross the key yeah, that's 32 up the middle behind his center due set. Standing him up is Yule, and uh, Yule and Byers up to bring him down short of a first down. It'll be another third down for VMI. Last year, VMI struggled with third down conversions, only converting about 30%. They're already one for one today. Well, and that's big for a young quarterback, getting the third downs that are manageable. Third and one is obviously one of those manageable situations, but they're going to have to get a better block out of the guard on the right-hand side. That play could have been busted up a lot more. He missed the block on the linebacker. Go to the I formation for the first time today on third and one. Trap play, big hole up the middle as Watkins is going to carry it for a first down to the VMI 35. Buckdell already missing Tracy Smith, the all Patriot League nose tackle. There's been nice movement by that huge offensive line that averages 6'4 and about 300 pounds. Byers brings down Watkins, but another first and 10 VMI, no score. 11.45 left first period. Nate Murray on the right side, the guard that I just talked about a play earlier, made up for it on that one. He went down and found somebody and got the first down with that block. 
First and 10, VMI, they'll spread the field. Two wide outs to the right, two to the left. That's the short side. They're in a line formation. Cobb back to pass, throws on the move. It's going to be caught at the 39, being twisted down immediately by Taglianetti is going to be the receiver, Matthew Nicholson, the sophomore from Front Royal, Virginia, had 14 catches a year ago. And he will pick up about four, we'll call it three, make it second and seven. Tangley and Eddie did exactly what he needed to do. I mean, he was coming out giving a little bit of cushion. That's about as well as you can play. That's a four-yard play. It's going to be a four-yard play. It just can't be more than that. You can't play it much better than that. No score between VMI and Bucknell, but the Kedets have driven from their own 12-yard line to the 40. Uh, back to pass as Cobb has time, throws it over the middle. It's going to be bobbled but caught by Watkins. Makes a man miss at the 42, and then will be driven back to the 41. Forward progress will get him to the VMI 42. Byers helps to bring him down. As Bucknell will come in with some subs on a third down and four. Nickel package for Coach Matt Borch, the defensive coordinator. Now this is a situation that's not as manageable. Third and four is still pretty good, but it's definitely a situation where VMI is going to throw the football. And if they do run it, it's going to be a draw play with the single set backfield. Maybe Bucknell brings a middle linebacker here and tries to get a little pressure. Well, with Augustine last year, they could use his legs. We'll see if Cobb can do that on third and four at the VMI 42. No score first quarter. Long count, play clock down to five. Looks like he's trying to draw him off sides. Delay handoff. Watkins, he'll get hit behind the line and drop. Good defense by the Bison. Taglianetti in on that stop along with Clay Yule. It'll be a punting situation for VMI as the Kedets will trot out there. Hayden Alford, who's the backup quarterback, I might add. He had five punts for 41-yard average last year along of 46. He's a right-footed kicker, and he'll stand at about the VMI 28. So the defense bent but did not break. Uh, a run blitz that time, Doug. And as I said, it was going to be a, either a pass play or a delay, and it was delayed enough that the linebackers came in from the outside, and that's where you saw a lot of the pressure and nowhere to run. Here comes Offer with some time, and he'll get the right foot into it. It's a... Wobbly kick that's going to take a VMI bounce inside the 25, rolling watermelon side towards the far sideline. will go out at the 18-yard line. So first and 10, Bison. No score in this first quarter with 9-19 left to play here in this first period of play. I'd like to remind everybody that Schmeiner Valley Farms is a family-owned and operated dairy. They've been serving your community since 1935, and you can find them at your favorite grocery store. Schneider Valley Farms, the proud sponsor of Bucknell University. As Bucknell come out with R.G. Nitty, the 6'4", 220 freshman from Dix Hills, New York. He completed 49% of his passes, 371 yards, 271 against Holy Cross. He had four TDs, five picks. He'll go in the pistol, and Del Morrow is back there along with the fullback. That is McManus. Hand off Del Morrow. He'll get the start, and he'll carry would-be tacklers for VMI past the Line of scrimmage, the 18, cutting it right back to the left to the 25. He dropped at the Bucknell 26-yard line. Defensive stop made by Stibe, and it'll be second down. You know, it's nice to have a two-back combination the way Bucknell does, and uh, Coach Joe Susan uses them very, very well with Williams and Delmaro. Delmaro getting the nod here in this particular set of series, but they're both about the same size guy, and you can't see him when they get the ball behind this enormous offensive line in the apartment building that's Rawls. At the 25-yard line, second and about two. Here's Nitty with his first pass. He'll throw it out in the right flat to Kazliner, and he'll make a man miss at the 35 and be dropped down at the Bucknell 37 yard line on the far side of the field making the stop is going to be the cornerback through hand first and 10 orange and blue no score 836 left in this first quarter and by the way our graphics package is down if you're watching on Bison Vision on the Patriot League Network have some technical difficulties so we'll try to keep you up to date as much as possible that's never easy with me <laughs> you know, I, I said about uh, uh, Lonnie Rawls being the apartment complex. If he's the apartment com complex, Cassette has to be the entire block. These guys are enormous up front. At the 37, Nitty going to go back to pass again. Pirouettes, and then we'll throw it out of the backfield to his tight end. That's Lebo. Lebo is immediately grabbed around the waist and brought down by the great linebacker, Miller Williams, the Mountain Brook, Alabama senior. Had 26 stops a year ago. Drops uh, Lebo for no game. We'll call it second and 10. One of the nice things about this offense and with uh, Nitty is he has a couple of, you know, a couple of opportunities to get some playing time last year. 
and you know struggled a little bit reading, but he's got a lot of veteran receivers that he can go to, and that makes it a lot more comfortable on a quarterback knowing you have a connection with your receivers. Nitty under center, hands off Del Maro. He will sprint right, cut back left behind his center, Noblet. Carry it on second and nine to the 40. Be dropped at the Bucknell 40, leaving Bucknell with a third and seven. No score between Bucknell and VMI. 7.30 and counting first period. A defensive stop made by Nelson for the key decks. Well, this is one of those third down situations that is opposite of what we saw with VMI. This is a little longer third down than you want. This is almost a guarantee pass situation. Maybe Nitty gets out on the edge and tries to find one of his receivers near the sideline on this play. Nitty now in the shotgun with Del Morrow off to his left. Looks like VMI could be coming. They have six men amassed at the line of scrimmage. Play clock down to five. Third and seven. Nitty gets the snap, has time, surveys the field, floats one deep, and is there. It's going to be complete, complete, complete for a first and ten bison. Jake Hartman, tight end, who is a very dangerous tight end, former wide out, grabs it, sliding to a stop at the VMI 25. I don't know if that's a check off at the line of scrimmage or not, but Nitty read that perfectly. He saw the blitz coming and then saw they backed off. And when VMI backed off, nobody took the tight end off the line. He went free and clear and nobody picked him up downfield that ball's thrown a little ahead of him he's gone 35 yard completion by nitty in the pistol they'll go at the 25 of vmi big hole up the middle for Delmaro. he'll skip past a man at the 20 he'll be snowballed under inside the 15 at the key to Ed's 12 yard line he loses his helmet so cj williams will make his first appearance here as stib brought down Del Morrow, but Bucknell getting things going offensively now. Well, that was just that big offensive line pushing up front. I mean, when, when you're sitting there with 285, 285, 290, and those are the three guys in front of you, there's going to be a hole up front. And that time, there wasn't a hole up front. There was a massive gash up front. At the VMI 12, Bucknell scoreless duel with 609 and counting left first period against the Keydets. Now back in the pistol, Nitty will go. He'll send Kelly the tight end motion to his right. It will be a delay handoff to Williams. Williams breaks free at the line of scrimmage, fights inside the VMI 10. And he'll get it down to the two before being wrestled down by Insminger, the left end for the Keydets. It'll be second and eight Bison. They need a down to the two of VMI for a first down. Williams gets his first carry. Last year he carried for almost 900 yards. Doug, in the last five years we've seen a lot of teams go to the pistol and the reason is if you have a quarterback who can read the linebacker or defensive end and do a good job of it, you really open up your offense to being almost a triple option style threat. That's what we saw right there. Now it's going to be an offset eye as Nitty goes under center. Del Maro back in a tailback. Nitty going to pass out of it. Sets up the screen nicely to Del Maro. He'll catch it in the flat to the left side. To the 10, to the 5. Go! to the pylon for six touchdown your Bucknell Bison a screen play that is able to amass 10 yards and the first score of 2014 left side of the line comes out the screen block they stay in the in that little window of five yards until the ball's thrown and then they create a huge wall and I mean a huge wall there was not a single VMI guy that was ever going to be able to get to that ball carrier and now here comes Derek Maurer, who was the punter. First time I can remember Bucknell player being the punter and place kicker in the same game. He's trying to get an extra point. The snap is low by the new snapper for Bucknell, Brandon Farrell. But a good job to be picking it up by the Bison holder. And the kicker, Maurer, puts it through the uprights. Good, and Bucknell, after holding VMI, gets the kick through the uprights to complete seven points. And with 5-16 left here in this first period, Bison lead this one by a score of seven to nothing. As the Bison end up able to uh, drive that ball some 60 yards for a score. Here comes the kickoff by Maurer. Going to be taken by Stout. Comes up the middle of the field to the 10 to the VMI 20 before being spun around and dropped by Evan Byers on special teams at the 20 yard line. So VMI with its second offensive possession here of this first quarter with 5.09 left to play. In the first quarter, Keydets will move left to right still, trailing seven to nothing after an eight play. And 70 yard drive for the orange and blue, the 10 yard pass, RJ Nitty, who had four touchdown passes a year ago, first career touchdown reception to Bucknell's tailback, Matt Del Morrow. And here comes Cobb again, Al Cobb making his first start, the red shirt freshman for VMI's, the ball on the left hash mark, moving left to right. Here comes Cobb with time, he looks deep, now gonna throw it short, it's gonna be caught out of the backfield by his backup 
tailback, Jabari Turner. Turner is grabbed around the ankles at the 27 yard line and immediately dropped by the Bucknell defense that time. As I think that was uh, Clay Yule who made the stop there. It's going to be second and four now at the 27 yard line for the Keydets. Moving left to right, trailing seven to nothing. They'll have two wide outs left, two to the right side. Cobb goes with a handoff to Turner, and Turner on second and about four, gonna be stopped short of a first down, moving to the left side, up to the 28 yard line. Byers helps to bring him down, and that'll bring a third and two for VMI, trailing seven nothing with about four minutes left in the first period. I'll tell you what, these two teams are not throwing the ball a whole lot, and when they do throw it, it's complete. This is a quickly moving first quarter. You know, that last pass play, uh, went through every re receiver in the pattern before he finally got to the outlet because everybody was covered. Everybody was covered, but good protection by that front line. Big guys up front for Cobb. Third and two for VMI. Now he's going to change the play with five on the play clock. Two wide outs to the right, wide side. Here's Cobb looking short side, going to get it complete for a first down up to the VMI 36-yard line. As grabbing that that time is going to be Sanders, Aaron also knocked down by Byers and also Jonov on that right side. Jonov making his first career start. It'll be a first and 10 VMI at the key that's 37. You know, if you're VMI, one of the things you want to tell your offensive line here today coming into this game is we have to give our quarterback time. Let him get through his reads and get comfortable. And that's exactly what they're doing. I mean, Bucknell has not put a ton of pressure on him, but they've handled the pressure when it's been put on very well. At the 37, first and 10, key debts. Here's a stretch handoff, no play action. Cobb rolls to his right, tries to set up the screen back to the left side to the guy he faked the ball to, Turner, but he throws it about five yards over his head as he was under tremendous pressure by the guy who Coach Susan really loves, Kevin, the 6'4 freshman, Abdullah Anderson of Galloway, New Jersey. He played one year of high school football, mainly a basketball player. That one year, though, he was the conference defensive player of the year. I'll tell you what, Connor Hayes got around there in the corner and almost got himself a sack as well. There was a handful of jersey that you heard the fans wanting a flag, but the official didn't quite see it the same way. It'll be second down in 10 VMI trailing, 7-0 first quarter, 314 left. Left guard kind of flinched, no flag. Here's a deep handoff. Turner, he's going to be hit behind the line. Good job by Lee Marvel. See, track down the runner along with... Kevin Byers has a word for the VMI bench. Loss of one back to the 36. It's third and 11 for the Kedas. There was absolutely no one blocking him at all. I think that was supposed to be one of those pulling guard plays. And again, the guard missed the block completely. That's going to leave VMI third and 11 here as Cobb coming up. I'm trying to get ESPN.com stats to work for me, but I can't get anything to work today. <laughs> it's third and 11. You're not the only one. <laughs> two wide outs left, two to the right. Back to Bass Cobb. Here's a blitz. He'll throw a screen against it. A good play call, but Turner, his intended receiver over in the left flat, got caught up in some traffic because the lineman allowed some of those defensive players to sift through, and then the pass went over his head incomplete. It's another punt for this VMI team. Well, that, you're right. That is the perfect offensive play, but this time it, Bucknell sold out with the blitz. They brought everybody, and there was so much traffic that it actually tied up the linemen from coming out and getting blocks out there as well for the running back. There was no time there at all. Perfectly called play at the right time on third and long. Here comes Hayden Alford with his second punt of the first quarter. Takes some time and gets a wobbly kick that is going to take a Bucknell bounce this time. It's Coach Susan's pointing it. He did a his great <laughs> job of directing that ball. <laughs> Keep moving up, and he did. Uh, pointed up the 44-yard line where Bucknell will take over, leading 7-0 with 2.20 left in the period here against the Kita. Even the football is intimidated by Coach Susan. <laughs> I don't blame it. <laughs> He's scared, too. At the 44, Bucknell leading it 7-0. We'll have it first and 10 with 2.20 left here in the period. By the way, Bucknell Athletics like to remind fans that when they present their wide Club card at the ticket office window on game day. They can receive a $2 discount for their tickets. This promotion will run all football season. Wise Markets, proud sponsor of Bison Athletics. Wise Markets, unmistakably wise. In the pistol, Nitty. He'll hand off Del Morrow. Big hole up the middle. He'll sprint to the 40. He'll sprint to the 30. He'll sprint to the 10. He will sprint to the end zone. That, ladies and gentlemen, is how you do it. Touchdown! 
out. Your Bucknell Bison, Matt Del Maro, put on the afterburners, and he goes 66 for a score. Nobody touched him, nobody looked at him, nobody saw him go to the end zone. He hit the hole so quickly in a beautiful hole up in the middle with that front th with the front three that we talked about earlier, and there was no chance that they were gonna stop him from scoring. Beautiful, beautiful run. Here's Del Morrow again for an extra point. Time the hold is good because the snap was much better. And the kick goes through the uprights just like in the first attempt. And Bucknell now has taken it one play, 66 yards, all by the little guy, Matt Del Morrow in the bison. We'll take a 14-0 first quarter lead. 2-11 left here in this first period. We're going to take a timeout. One play, 66 yards, and the longest career run from scrimmage by one Matt Del Maro, and I tell you what, once he got to the line of scrimmage, maybe a yard past that, Kevin, he was definitely gone. Oh, I don't even think he was, uh, he was three yards behind he was gone. <laughs> I mean, there was a huge hole up front, and no one, as I said earlier, even had a chance to even get a hand on him. He got through that hole so quick, and, and that's what both of these backs, Del Maro and, and uh, uh, and Williams do. They, they just get to the hole so quick. They are so fat. They're so small and so fast with their feet that you don't even see them through the hole before they're gone. Another kickoff by Del Maro and taking it out of his end zone. It's going to be Stout. He'll push his lead blocker up to the 15 and then get grabbed around the ankles at about the 20. Flags all down on the field as another starter coming in. Or make that Berg. Uh, Berg had some starts in fall camp, but uh, is the Running back, or in this case, yeah, running back, Taylor Stout, what he's listed as, came up. He, I think, may have gotten the benefit of an illegal block. Oh, yeah. It, 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 when two officials see it. So a 2.06 left here in this first quarter, 14-0 Bison. That was our referee, Henry Wimberg, with the information. So Bucktail takes the second of the two fouls. Doug, one of the big problems right now VMI is having is their offense is just kind of uh, going through the motions. They're missing a couple of blocks up front. Bucknell's taking advantage of these opportunities that are being given defensively. But when the punt comes around, they are not turning the field at all. And these punts have been very, very short. With a penalty like that, that really puts you in a world of hurt. And if you're VMI, you cannot go down three scores here. And their punter has not been able to get them out of these jam and these tight situations. Well, the seven yard line, it's going to be first and 10 VMI. Cobb remains the quarterback. We'll have to see if we'll see Hayden Alford as this game wears on. It looks like Watts is back there at tailback now. Two wideouts left, handoff up the middle to Watts who really ran the ball well, his first opportunity. Flags all over as Watts will take it behind left guard Ian Roseborough up to the VMI 10, surrounded by blue-shirted Bison, but there are flags everywhere. We'll have to see what the call is there. Is by the way, Corvallis Campus Living partners with colleges and universities to create communities. Oh, a face mask, Mr. Winberg says on the Bison. That's a big positive for VMI. Moves the ball up to the 36 create communities where students can live, learn, and play. They understand complex student housing challenges and Corvius Campus Living delivers holistic long-term solutions. Visit them at Corvius.com. And by the way, that's the first foul here today. And VMI gets its second first down of the game. And their best play of the game. <laughs> exactly. With the ball up to the 36, Cobb back to pass, throws it on a dart over the middle. It's tipped up in the air off the hands of Sanders and then diving for a possible interception was Evan Byers at the VMI 35. He couldn't come up with it. Byers, of course, last year had four INTs. He almost had his fifth here, or the four career interceptions, I should say. He almost had his uh, first of this year, but it's second and 10 VMI trailing 14, nothing a minute 45 left in the first. Lee Marvel comes off the left side linebacker and puts big time pressure on. That's why that ball was thrown in a hurry. And that's what Bucknell's defense is doing right now. They're starting to make the young quarterback make quick decisions. Here's Cobb back to pass again under pressure, throws it, it's tipped up in the air. And it falls at the VMI 40. Tried to hit I think the tailback coming across the middle. He got really way late. He's getting up very slowly over there as well. I think, uh, maybe, actually, I'm sorry, it was Aaron Sanders that the uh, uh, slot back 
who now you can see if you're watching a Bison Vision on the Patriot League Network, he looks like he really took a shot. He may be a little woozy out there, Kevin. So Sanders walks off, and here is Cobb on third and 10, throws it out, complete in the far sideline, flag is down, as it will be completed on that far side of the field, short of a first down by about a yard, as Burton caught the ball and was brought down over in that far side of the field by the Bison defensive backs. And we'll have to see. Well, that's all, It's holding, I, I saw the, uh, the Official that threw it signaled a hold to the Offense referee. or defense? That's the question. Holding. That's going to be defensive. That's what I thought. Holding. And that's a tough one right there because now instead of third down, you're looking at automatic first down. And again, penalties giving VMI an opportunity. And that's going to be a big completion as the key deads now are four for five on third down conversions. We have... Minute 33 left here in this first period. Bucknell on top of VMI, 14 nothing. Del Maro on that 56 yard jaunt. And also Nitty passing to Del Maro for the first score of the game. Move the ball up. Well, it'll just be a first down at the 36 again. First and 10, VMI at their own 36. Back to pass, Cobb throws it on a dart and a pirouetting attempt at the 45 to catch the ball. Unable to do so is going to be Nicholson on the hit out there by the Bison defense. I think it was Clay Yule, and then a flag on the hit, and they may be. This might be a targeting. I wonder if they're gonna call targeting. I don't think it was targeting, because I didn't see a helmet contact, and usually you have to drop your shoulders to get the targeting call. The officials are talking it over. We'll see what happens. Henry Winberg is our referee. He discussed it with the side judge. They didn't call it targeting, they just call it a personal foul. It wasn't a helmet to helmet because he didn't signal the helmet contact. But again, another penalty. Uh, the only thing you could say is defenseless receiver must have been what they were assuming in that play. Well, he was defenseless because the pass was so far behind him. Right. I mean, to be quite honest, he spun it's, into the hit. Yeah, it, it's, a very, it's a very, very tough call. And again, the football is turning into a game where the defense has no advantages at all and all the disadvantages. First time today that Kedets will be in Bucknell territory on first and 10. A great grab down inside the Bison. 40 at the 39-yard line is extending that time was four lines. And he's going to, I'm sorry, no, I think it actually was uh, Rob. Patterson, who leapt up there and got it as Byers brought him down at the 39, but another first down. Fifth now for VMI with 54 ticks left in the quarter, trailing 14 nothing. They have it though at the Buckdale 39, first and 10, moving left to right here. Probably another play, maybe two left in this first quarter. Good shot on Bison Vision of the redshirt freshman quarterback for VMI, Al Cobb. Wide side is to his right, he has two wide outs there. Here comes a quick pass that way. It's going to be caught. Caught down at the Bucknell 35 and then getting planted out of bounds was four lines. The Richmond, Virginia sophomore is coming over there was Yule. And also helping out defensively for the Bison was Ben Richard, freshman linebacker. It'll be pickup of two, second down and eight. So uh, Lewis Taglianetti got that penalty in. Buckdale has given up two first downs via the penalty on this drive. And they've been three big first downs that have actually moved this ball, what started about the 10 yard line on the drive because of the VMI penalty on the kickoff return. At the Buckdale 37, last play of the first quarter upcoming, I'm guessing with 11 seconds left. I feel pretty good with that. <laughs> they have to snap it. Play clock down to two, down to one. They do get it off. Here is Cobb, back to pass, under pressure. He's going to be surrounded and dropped for a sack as the corner in. Fumble. He lost the ball, but the official will blow the play dead at the 46 of Bucknell to end this first quarter. Dylan McDonald and Clay Yule came in, and Bucknell put the pressure on that big offensive line here to end this first quarter as the Bison will take a 14-0 lead into the second period, a big third down and long for VMI when we return. One near you, Rice Doug Burns on Kevin Herr back at Christy Matthews at Memorial Stadium as we start the second period of action, visiting Virginia Military Institute with a good fan following across the way here at Christy Matthews at Memorial Stadium. Trailing Bucknell 14-0, they'll have it now moving right to left towards the open end of Christy. 
And they'll have the ball on a third and long at the Bucktail 46 yard line. What a big time for a big sack that time by the Bison D. Well, you, you, you see Bucknell's defense taking advantage of opportunities when they're being given, on, especially on second and long and third and long where they're assuming it's a passing down and they're bringing the house. I mean, linebackers, uh, I saw a, a corner or two fly in there a couple of times and they're really, really putting a ton of pressure on the young quarterback, making having him make quick decisions. And you know what? He's been errant on some passes and very close to getting them picked off. And the one would have been a pick six if it would have been picked off. Kevin will give the first quarter stats here when we get back to action here. Here comes Cobb on third and long. He's going to throw it downfield. Man wide open. It's going to be caught for a first down. On third down and 18, another third down conversion for VMI. As getting downfield with four lines, and he'll pick it all the way down to the Buckdale 25. And Cobb was on target that time, Kevin, and he looked pretty good in that first quarter, stat-wise. He did, and that's now four for six on third down conversions, but Cobb, six of 10, now seven of 11 for 38 yards coming into the, and, and add on the yards there. Not real impressive yardage-wise, but it's all high percentage passes that get him confidence, and that's what Bucknell's defense can't let happen. 21 yard catch there, and here comes somebody for Bucknell, maybe jumping a little too soon, maybe Demetrius Baldwin Youngblood. And quickly, Cobb had the center, well, actually, the center to set decide exactly. to snap the ball. That is a heads up veteran play. When you and when it's going to be Abdul Anderson, only yeah. played one year of high school football. Well, what happens, is, you know, the center sees him cross the line and doesn't give him a chance to come back. He just snaps the ball. That is a veteran play. And credit, credit, heads up play by the quarterback, too, by making it look like the play's continuing on so he doesn't end up, uh, you know, drawing a uh, fumbling the ball away deepest penetration for vmi today trailing 14 nothing just underway second period they're moving right to left with cobb the red shirt freshman under center two-step drop looks deep fires a deep man wide open it's going to be touchdown Keydets. as dancing into the end zone is doug burton the red shirt senior who scored once last year caught four catches for 51 yards against bucknell no score but he does get a score from 20 yards here and the young defense on the sidelines, the corners having some trouble keeping up with some of these very good receivers for the Keita. Yeah, that was something that I think came up from upstairs. They haven't really gone to the outside very much and the receivers a whole lot. I think they saw the cushion that they were being given and took advantage of it there. So Cobb gets his first career touchdown pass. This one from 20, and here comes the left-footed kicker, Dylan Christopher, who kicked a score record 52-yard field goal against Bucknell last year. He'll easily get this extra point up and good. He hit 28 of 29 last season. And BMI slices the deficit in half from 14 nothing to 14-7 at the very beginning of this second period. And I tell you what, to be quite honest, Bucknell gave VMI quite a bit. You know, they ended up with five first downs on that drive alone. Two of them were via penalty. And remember, they got another penalty a moment ago before the 20-yard strike from Cobb to Burton. You're absolutely right. Every, I mean, half of that drive, maybe even three quarters of that drive, were Bucknell penalties. Whether it be, and and they were two 15-yard penalties in there too. I mean, that that takes a big chunk of the field out right there. And this drive started back inside the 10-yard line or thereabouts after the penalty VMI got on the returning kick or on the ensuing kickoff after the Bucknell touchdown. Christopher is set to uh, boot this one deep to the Bison. And he will do so to Brian Reagan. Reagan will take it two yards deep in the end zone, but he's going to run it out up the middle of the field as he will get upended as he'll cross the 14 to the 15. Good coverage downfield by John Strozek, the defensive back from Powell High School in Knoxville, Tennessee. And the Bucknell offense will be on for the first time in a while. Remember, the Kedets got the ball with 2.06 left in that first period and able to eat up some three minutes on a drive that seemed longer just because there were so many penalties on that drop. Doug, you were talking about the scoreboard. Uh, Wagner beats Georgetown 21-3, and it was Ball State over Colgate 30-10. to Not to be confused with Georgetown beating Wagner. That, that would be a different <laughs> university. Now Nitty will have a full house backfield in the backfield with him in a pistol formation at the 15. He'll go with the stretch handoff to C.J. Williams, and he's going to get hit. As he tried to tiptoe his way up the sideline, hit very hard that time by a hard-charging uh, Alex James, defensive back. 
along with Joe Nelson, pick up a one, second and nine. Bison lead 14-7 over VMI with about 14 minutes remaining in the half. Coach O'Connor right there trying to see what's on the outside. They've had a lot of success in between the tackles. Let's see what's available on the outside. And now don't be surprised if they run the, uh, the pistol draw now up the middle and see if that opens back up for them. Second and 11, again, if you're watching a Bison Vision, graphics issues there. Second and 11, here's Nitty at the Bison 16. He's gonna roll to his left. The right-handed thrower will throw it long down the far side of the field, and it's gonna be incomplete, intending it for, it looked like his tied end, Lee Bowen. Good defensive coverage there. The far side of the field by the strong safety, Elijah Robinson, the sophomore from Waldorf, Maryland. Third and nine, and now VMI, even though they fell behind 14-0, starting to make some plays. And they absolutely are. And this is what I talked about early on, Doug. This is what happened last year. VMI got out early, jumped to an early lead, built a whole lot of confidence, and it took the halftime locker room to get everything squared away for Bucknell. Now, this time, Bucknell started with a big lead, but VMI now starting to build confidence because they're in this game again. Third and nine, blitz by VMI. Long count by Nitty. Four on the play clock. Now he goes back to pass. He'll throw it on a dart. Man is open, but he got held up at the 34-yard line. He was looking for break. But break was, I kind of thought, grabbed out there by the defensive back. Uh, and that was uh, Damian Jones, but no flag. And so good defense and fourth and nine. Here comes a punt by Derek Maurer here. This will be his second punt of his career. Now, nah, check that. First punt. This will be say, Derek's this is the first, first punt. punt of the day, yeah. And he's going to be booting it away from his own uh, about two-yard line when he gets this one off. And to return the punt, it's going to be... Dane four lines. This is one of those opportunities to change the field. VMI has not been able to do that with special teams. We'll see if Bucknell special teams can. Four lines can certainly do it. Mauer takes a long time, gets a high wobbly hanging punt that's gonna be taken on the near side by four lines and he's just hog collared up high and dropped right down at the 40 of VMI. Great defensive play that time by the punt coverage team led by Trey Johnson, the freshman cornerback out of Shaker Heights, Ohio, and he will drop down four lines at the 40, and that was very good coverage downfield. It was outstanding coverage. He was gunner, and there was nothing that was stopping him at all. The guy that was set to block him, I don't even know if he got a hand on him. 13.06 remaining here in the half, 14-7 Bucknell. However, VMI has the ball moving right to left after driving some seven plays, 93 yards on their last offensive possession. They'll have Cobb in at quarterback. He has completed eight of his 12 passes for 93 yards. At the 40 of VMI, here's Cobb back to pass, throws it on a dart, it's gonna be completed on a slant at the 45 yard line. It's falling down in front of Lewis Taglianetti that time. Gonna be the receiver for a pickup of about six, second and four there, and it's going to be VMI with a second and a very manageable four. Tight coverage on the wide receiver to the near side, but on the far side of the field where that ball was thrown, there was a little bit of a five, almost 10 yard cushion, and that time VMI took advantage. Not sure, and that could have been Burton on that catch. I, I couldn't quite make out the numeral. Whatever, it was a six yard gain off the hands of Cobb. Now, ball on the right hash mark. VMI moves right to left. They'll go with a handoff turner. He's going to break it from the left side to the right side. Flags are down as he is down at the line of scrimmage. Five defensive players for the Bison in on that stop led by Jalen Amaker. Amaker, a senior this year, has not played much except on special teams, but he got the start at cornerback here today. We'll have to see what Henry Wimberg says about the penalty. It looks like it's going to be on VMI here. Kevin? Hey, offense, number 66. You know, that, that's one of the things if you're VMI coaches, uh, the VMI uh, coaching staff, you have to be going, how in the world do these five guys make the tackle and we're called for holding? <laughs> I mean, point. if you're going to do it, do it well. <laughs> because we're going to get penalized for it. Don't let your running back get crushed. That's their first penalty. This veteran offensive line for Sparky Woods, who in and of himself is a veteran coach, formerly coached at Appalachian State. They lost today at Michigan, by the way, in a revenge game. And then, of course, also coached at South Carolina, when South Carolina pretty much entered the Southeastern Conference. How about South Carolina? Well, they better get better. Yeah. <laughs> or Texas A&M is a world beater. And, and you know what? You and I talked about this over the summer. I said it's really hard to not make the number one team in FCS be the number one team until they get beaten. 
Well, they still haven't gotten beaten yet. So <laughs> That's right. Uh, you have score update on the Williamsport Sun Gazette scoreboard? I do indeed, and we were talking about it earlier. Uh, a couple of the uh, uh, games that wrapped up was uh, North Carolina State edging Georgia Southern 24-23. We talked about Ball State beating Colgate 30-10. Uh, it was an Air Force win over Nichols State, 44-16. And earlier today, Penn State wins by one in Ireland over UCF. Here it's 14-7. Bison throwing on a dart is Cobb. He'll get it to Sanders close to the first down. Sticks at the 49. They'll spot it before Steinbeck can bring down Sanders. And Sanders had a pretty good first half here with 11.45 left in the half. It'll be third and one BMI. And Doug, the big upset of the day, as I mentioned, or alluded to, North Dakota State beating Iowa State 34-14. I don't even know if you can call North Dakota State beating an FBS team an, an upset anymore. That's their 25th consecutive win, and that sets an FCS record. And remember, they started out last year winning at Kansas State. I, I, I don't know who's going to play them at FBS anymore. <laughs> they may move up. Uh, they, they may move up from I, I FCS. Think they, I think it's time, yeah. Third and one. It'll be a I formation behind Cobb. Bucknell has seven men at the line of scrimmage, and now a timeout as the play clock was down to one. Coach Sparky Woods will take it. 11-11 left first half. 14-7 Bucknell over VMI. We'll take a break as well. Doug Birdsall, Kevin Hur at Christie Matthews at Memorial Stadium with the 11-11 left in this first half. 14-7 Bison, if you just tuned in, the Bison had a 10-yard scoring pass from R.J. Nitty to uh, Matt Dalmaro. That culminated in an eight-play 70-yard drive and then a 56-yard run from Delmaro. Made it 14-0 with the extra point by uh, Derek Maurer. Bison, that coming with 2-11 left in the half, but VMI came back and aided by a couple of defensive penalties against the Bison. Able to go seven plays, 93 yards, and score on a 20-yard pass from Cobb making his first career uh, start again to uh, Burton. It's third and one now at the VMI 49. VMI moving right to left here in the second quarter after a timeout. Play action, Cobb under pressure, throws in the flat, caught! It'll be a first down and more as getting hit head on head inside the 40 at the 39 yard line for the VMI Kedets is going to be the backup tidy, uh, running back Kyle Vardo and Vardo Got hit hard by Taglianetti. He held on. It'll be a first and 10 VMI at the Bucktail 38. That was a great play call and very well executed. Taglianetti, as you said, really, uh, I think, took the brunt of that on between the shoulder and the helmet. He uh, He's still on the field. He looked a little woozy, but now he looks a little bit better as he gets ready to, for this play. 1040 left here in this first half. VMI on the move at the 38. Here is Cobb back to pass, has time, throws it deep. It's a wobbler. It's up for grabs, and Sanders out leaves Spamaker, and he scores six. Touchdown, Key Nets. Sanders at six feet, two inches, out leap the six foot senior Jalen Amaker, who missed time his leap. And Sanders easily able to dance the last two yards, and it's 14 13. Bison lead trimmed to one. Well, that time the ball's thrown on the inside shoulder and not getting on. Uh, make Amaker did not get around the, the receiver. He left the receiver get in front of him and then out leap him for the ball. He tried to time it, stopped, and at that point gave the receiver the opportunity to make the play. Well, once again, here comes Christopher for his second extra point of the half, and the left footer easily gets it through the uprights. Good. And now VMI has tied things up as VMI goes just four plays, and that time 60 yards for the score. Right now, his offense needs to get things going again, and maybe Brian Riggin can do it on this kickoff return. Talk about a tale of two, uh, well, quarters, I guess. Here comes Christopher with the boot. It'll take a hop, just die at the seven, picked up by Regan. He was going to be hemmed in on the near sideline. Will still battle his way up to the 21-yard line. Coming up to make the stop on kick coverage is Travis Hawkins for VMI. First and 10, Bison, but after scoring on their first two drives of the game, they were held to a punt last time. A little bit better starting position here at the Buckdale 20 and a half. This is an interesting score as we look at the uh, Patriot League games in action. Holy Cross leading Albany six to nothing on two field goals midway through the second. But at the end of the first, Fordham leads St. Francis 11 nothing. <laughs> it's interesting. Nitty under center. He's going to have Williams back in a tailback. Go with a stretch handoff to CJ. Tries to cut it back, but Stiv is waiting on him. Gain a yard, and that's it. It's going off Julian Davenport. The left tackle's hip was CJ Williams. And is Matt Del Maro okay? I'm kind of surprised 
the way he ran in those first couple of series that he had now there. I don't know, I, I'm not sure. Maybe they're platooning every so many plays, every so many series. Uh, again, it's nice to have that option when you ha when it when it's available to you. And, and this year, hopefully both players stay healthy and we'll have that opportunity to rotate in. At the 22-yard line, there's a shot of Bison Vision. Patriot League Network of Math just standing there, okay. Second and 10 play action. Nitty has all day. Now we'll throw it short. It's going to be caught by Kasslander for first down. Bobby caught the first throw of the day by Nitty. Hadn't been targeted since he was that time, and he's dropped immediately at the 35, but a first down for the Bison. That's our first first down here in a while, the fourth of the first half. One of the things I like about Bobby Kaslander is the way he runs his routes. That route he was running looked like a post pattern, and he literally stopped, dead stopped, turned around, and turned it into a button hook, and the defender went, where'd he go? <laughs> and then he shielded the defender on his back. Yeah, he couldn't even see the ball. First and 10 at the 35 of Buckdell. It'll be a handoff with a big hole. Here's Williams carrying it to the 39, up to the Buckdell 41. Right behind his center, Brandon Nobla, the chasm open, holding on for dear life to CJ is Darnell Ashton for the VMI Kedets. It's 14 all, 9, 10 and counting left first half, second and five at Buckdell's offense under first year offensive coordinator Mike O'Connor getting it going again. Yeah, looking like they might hitting might be hitting their stride here on this particular series, getting back to a lot of the things they've been doing, and that's attacking the middle of the field. Now Nitty goes back into the pistol. He'll have a wide out to the left side. That's break. Now the tight end will join him in the backfield on second and four. Play action, Nitty has time, throws it deep down the far side, throws it to Kasslander, and he short armed it at the 18 yard line. I think if he had reached out with his arms, Kasslander might have caught it. He wouldn't have scored, but he would have caught it, probably fallen down at the 18. He had beaten both defensive backs down this near sideline, but that was a good pass by Nitty. It was on target. And I just think Bobby kind of didn't reach his arms out. I, I think he got I think he got a little bit confused. He thought the ball was going to go long, and all of a sudden it kind of dropped on him, and then he was in between. But he's going to they have a new film system here at Bucknell where the kids can watch it in the dorms. He's not going to want to watch that play. <laughs> no. Third and five bison at the Bucknell 41 in a 14 all game. VMI. Big third down here, long count by Nitty with five on the play clock. He's in the pistol. He gets the snap from Noblet. He'll throw it short. It's going to be caught by Kazlander and the sure-handed junior, who was a defensive back, turn wide receiver, because he asked Coach Susan, can I be a wide receiver? Coach Susan said, boy, that was the best thing he ever did to me. He asked him for that. He'll get it for a first down at the 47. Well, as I said, you know, he runs really, really good routes. He cuts really hard. And that was another one of those little turn-in routes. And again, he makes it look like after he just got done beating two guys deep that he's going deep again and just cuts the route right off. Now three wideouts in a triangular formation to the wide or left side as Buckdale moves left to right. Now the tight end, Kelly, will break it off and join Nitty in the pistol backfield. Hand off Williams. He'll go to his left, then cut back right. VMI defenders just ripping at the ball. And where is the whistle blow on first and 10? Looked like Williams' forward progress pretty well stopped. But they waited forever to blow the whistle. If they would have done that on that one VMI drive, Buckdale would have had Taglianetti for a fumble recovery for a touchdown. But nonetheless, two-yard gain by Williams. He's stopped by the uh, defensive lineman, Nelson, there. It'll be second and eight. Bison, 14 all game, 740 left in the half. Doug, when you're in the weight room and they're doing leg presses, that's the 700-pound leg press right there. 205 for him and another 500 for the rest of the guys <laughs> he carried. Second and eight in the pistol is Nitty. Here's a blitz up the middle by VMI. It's picked up. Nitty has time. He'll throw a deep man. Is there? It's Josh Brink. It's going to be down to the 10, down to the five, down to the two. Ladies and gentlemen, from Texas, the Lone Star State, the lone man with the ball is Joshua Brink. Touchdown! Your Bucknell Bison Brink breaks it free for six, and the Bison regain the lead. Uh, you know, I just talked about Kaslander's routes and how well that he runs those routes. That time break didn't do anything special. He ran literally by the defensive back. The only thing he could do is dive and hope, and the hope went away. Here comes Mauer trying to make it three for three and extra points. Break is the holder, high snap by the new snapper. Goyette has graduated, but Mauer puts it through good. And Bucknell has taken a seven point lead, 21-14. Here comes Maurer with the kickoff, and it's not a good one. It goes out of bounds at the 20. So Nikita, that's why a good field position to start this drive with 721 left in the half. 
Mehmeyer will have it at the heat at 35, it, moving it, right to left. I'm sorry, Doug, I was just gonna say, watching Maurer's reactions there after that and watching the run-up, it just looked like he was out of sync a little bit on that one. I was talking to my friend Randy Lee, um, the play-by-play -play announcer for Western Kentucky University, and they had an outstanding shootout with Bowling Green, a team that's gonna be picked to win the Mid-American Conference, WKU now in its first year at Conference USA. He said that both teams went no huddle, Bowling Green and WKU. WKU ran 97 offensive plays, and you know, you said that he, uh, Maurer didn't feel much in sync, WKU and Bowling Green were in sync. Final score, 59-31. Did he have a color commentator? Because he probably I didn't asked, have any need for one. I asked him that very thing. Did he even get a chance to talk? And he said, nope. nope. <laughs> and he said he hates it because I can kind of football. <laughs> that's kind of how football is gone. You know, At least these yeah. two teams are huddling today. Yeah, and you know what? I, I don't mind the run up to the line and then wait 20 seconds to snap the ball. At least that gets you a little bit of time. But you know that may be the way football is moving. Cobb, who has completed 12 of 16 passes in his initial start in his career under center Doucette. Long count, gonna go with a quick screen out near side. Led his man, four lines a little too much. And four lines may have slipped or stopped as he came up the near sideline. Had it on his hand at the 36 of VMI, but he may have also seen out of the corner of his eye Clay Yule coming his way. And he said, I'll just drop this. Well, Clay Yule comes up and makes it look like he's going to blitz. And I think that's where the whole play gets thrown off because then he steps back into coverage and that ball was thrown way away from where it should have been for an easy little open pass. 7-17 remaining first half, 21-14 Bison. Kedet's with it at their own 35. Draw play, big hole for Turner. Turner is going to take it past the 40 up to the 42 yard line was that Watts that's two not two, two one so that's Watts who had a good first series for the Kedets I think DB wide Demetrius Baldwin Youngblood may have tripped him up two and a half maybe three yards short of a first at the 42 we'll call it third and three yeah I asked him last year can I just shorten it up to DB wide he goes yeah I said good that makes it better uh, coach Susan just calls him Demetrius Baldwin yeah I know <laughs> I, and, but and that confuses me then because I'm not sure who he's talking about third down and two and a half Cobb for VMI Kedets at their own 42, moving right to left, trailing by seven here. 6.40 left in the half. Here is a handoff right. Big hole for Watts. He'll carry it for a first down. Great surge by this huge offensive line, including right tackle 6'8", 325, redshirt senior Andy Marcotte out of Williamsburg, Virginia. That opened the hole for Watts. He'll carry it to the VMI 47, first and 10. Kedets, their eighth first down of the half. Doug, what I'm seeing off this offensive line for VMI is they're having more success just man on man. When they try and pull or they try and just get a little tricky, that's when they run into trouble. If they're man on man, straight up blocking, they're winning. Well, they're much bigger than the defensive line, of course, of Bucknell. At the 47 of VMI, Kedets on a drive here. Go with a play action. Cobb looking deep, has a man downfield. He beat the defensive back, but the defensive back comes back very nicely and makes up that action as that's going to be for Bucknell. Alex James, the intended receiver was Matthew Nicholson, who is 6'2", and he had the inside coverage, but Cobb may have overthrown him a little, which allowed Bucknell's defensive back there, John Off, to uh, catch up with the play at second and 10. I don't believe that that uh, Cobb even saw John Off there with the inside coverage because he kind of disappears a little bit downfield, and then all of a sudden that ball's thrown, and he reacts to the ball very, very well. Second and 10, VMI trailing 21-14. Clock stop, 6.05 left in the half. Setting up the screen is Cobb. Throw it out to the right side to Watts. He'll skip past a man in midfield. He'll take it for a VMI first down down the far sideline to the 38-yard line. Byers brings him down. But another first down, the ninth of the half for VMI, the second of this drive. And the Key Deads have it at the 42. And I tell you what, the offensive coaching staff for the Key Deads doing a fine job there, getting everything arranged. Kevin starting to don the wireless mic here as he'll head down, talk with Coach Susan here in just a bit. At the Bucknell 42, first and 10 Key Deads trailing by seven with 540 and counting left in this first half. Now watch back in the single setback mode as Cobb goes with a draw up the middle. He'll cut it to the left, Will Watts, and looks like he'll be met and dropped that time by Clay Yule inside the Bison 40 at the 38-yard line. That's going to leave the Kedets with a second and six, and they're doing a great job. They still have two timeouts left in this first half of using the clock. Down by seven after Buckdale regained the lead on a seven-play 80-yard drive. Kedets right now are on the Seventh play of this drive at the Bucknell 38. Here comes back to pass. Cobb now get it to Watts. 
and Watt's gonna be met and dropped almost immediately by a guy who wears number 90, Doug Whitlock, a freshman out of Monmouth Beach, New Jersey, who actually signed up with Navy and went to the Naval Academy Prep School, but decided to come to Bucknell like C.J. Williams, the running back for Bucknell did. Maybe not happy with Bucknell because of those, I don't think, but that happens. But here comes Cobb again, facing a third and six. Third and six at the Bucknell 38. BMI trailing Bucknell by seven. Cobb out of the shotgun, has time, throws down the middle. It's high and it's incomplete. Tried to hit Sanders on a crossing pattern at the Bucknell 23-yard line, but right there was Matt Steinbeck, the All-Patriot League free safety, and I think that maybe Sanders thought he might get contact there, and he kind of pulled his hands in a little bit as well. So that's going to probably produce a punt here. It looks like that Hayden Alford will come out and punt this ball. As the Kedets trailing by seven. Ain't ready to kick this one away. Buck tells Josh Brake with his heels at the Bison 10 as VMI punts it if they punt it on fourth and six. Right to left. Buck playing safety. And Alford gets a very nice hanging punt. It bounces at the five, takes a VMI bounce in a certain way. It bounced up field, but didn't bounce into the end zone. Bounces at the 12 and is downed right there by the VMI Cadets, Alex Keys. And it'll be first and 10. Bison leading 21 14 with 414 left in the half. However, very nice job putting one inside the 20 for Alford. Alford last year did not have any punts inside the 20, but he only punted the ball four times. So Bucknell will have it first and 10 with still 414 and all four or three of their timeouts left. Bison will have it at the Bucknell 12, moving left to right, Nitty under center, Noblet, take a two-step drop, pump, now throw it deep down the far sideline, man is there, it's going to be Kasliner, he'll have it at the first down, sticks, he'll come racing up the far sideline to the Bucknell 40, and finally be wrestled down to the field turf surface at the 47-yard line. Damian Jones brings him down, but another big pass completion by R.J. Nitty. Nitty has done a terrific job here today. Of course, he debuted against Lafayette and Holy Cross last year. I think Kevin Hur is down on the field now. Yeah, we'll go you, to you can see down here a lot better that tons and tons of cushion they're giving Kaslander, and he takes advantage of it right there. Here's an Eddie under pressure trying to set up a screen. He's going to throw it down the near sideline, intending it for break. It'll be incomplete, but a good job by Nitty under pressure. He didn't throw the ball up for grabs like he did against Holy Cross in his initial start last year. Kevin, remember he had two pick sixes against the Crusaders, even though he threw for 271 yards. It's second and 10 Bison, by the way, at the Bucknell 47, leading 21-14. Well, that's a perfect example of if the ball's not going to be caught by your receiver, nobody's going to catch it, and that ball went back in three or four rows into the st into the uh, into the uh, sidelines here of the players. Kevin, smile. You're on Bison Vision on the Patriot League <laughs> Network. That's the slimmed down version of Kevin. Yes, thank you. Second and 10, handoff Williams, crisscross handoff, and CJ who ran for almost 100 yards against VMI last year. Carries it for a couple here for being swarmed and dropped by uh, Washington. Clock continuing to move, 320 and counting left in the half, Bucknell 21, VMI 14. Nice thing here, Doug, is there's an opportunity with, a, with timeouts remaining to just sit back and just run your offense and still have time to score and then go into the locker room with a big lead. Bucknell right now has 91 rushing yards. Play clock at 14 as the Bison break the huddle in the pistol formation. Nitty, the ball at the Bucknell 49, facing a third and eight. Here comes a pressure on the side, picked up. Now Nitty under pressure, he has the ball knocked loose. It's loose at the 40, it's loose at the 37. VMI says they have it at the 37 yard line, and they do. Nitty, who did not have a turnover to this point, going to get stripped on the pressure that time, and Ryan Francis is going to cover it up for VMI, and that's the first turnover of the game for the Bison, and VMI going to try and take advantage of it here. They'll have it. Kevin at the Bucknell, 37, down 21-14 with 2.48 left in the half. Everything collapsed around him on that particular play. Had some open receivers, but it just didn't happen quite quick enough and needs to tuck that ball away and sometimes take a sack. 
that was a good example of an opportunity to take a sack and just come out of it and go to the next play. Now at the 37, VMI back in business here, down by seven. Still have 248 and two timeouts left. Back to pass Cobb, has time, pumps, goes deep down the far sideline, but Amaker gets the defense or the uh, receiver. Burton caught up down that far side of the field. And that was Sanders, Aaron Sanders, and so it's going to be incomplete. Thankfully, no flag on Jalen Amaker there as he kind of got caught up on that far side of the field. Second and 10, but the clock stopped with 243 left in the half. 21-14, Bucknell on top of VMI. By the way, stay tuned at the half. We will have our Meet a Bison segment with Lee Marvel and Matt Steinbeck, the two captains, and we'll get to hear from Patriot League Director of Officiating, Jim McConaughey. It's second and 10 VMI at the Bucknell 37 after the fumble uh, by Nitty. Under center, Cobb, two, three, four step drop. Now plants, now fires it short, going to be caught. It's going to be taken by Nicholson inside the Bison 30. He'll be wrapped up short of the first down by a yard by uh, Evan Byers. Byers, of course, had 19 tackles last year against VMI. He'll drop Nicholson a yard short here at the 27 yard line. What's the play call here for VMI? Well, I'll tell you what, the redshirt freshman is going through his progressions very, very well. It was supposed to come down the left side, then he went to the middle field, and then he went to the outlet receiver in his safety valve. And Watson there, expect a run. They've been very good rushing the ball here today. Only 30 net yards, but of course that includes some sacks. Oh, no, the left tackle moved on third and one. Manuel Cooper, the 6'5", 3'10", senior, didn't play last year. The only game he didn't, he comes out of his stance, and that's going to put the Kedets back another five. So instead of an easy run call, you would think with 201 left in the half, could be a pass here, Kevin. Doug Cobb was that time was checking off at the line of scrimmage, and sometimes when you have a check, the certain check is on first sound. That one obviously was not, although the left defensive tackle thought it was. Second, That's a big mistake. Uh, no doubt. Second penalty uh, in the VMI offense this half. Trailing 21-14 after the nitty fumble. Third and six. Back to pass. Here's Cobb. Gets it wide open to Burton. He'll break a tackle at the 20. He's down the near sideline for VMI and finally tripped up at the Buckdell 18. But another first and 10 for this Heatheads team as Johnoff brings down the receiver Burton that time. That's the 10th first down of the half for VMI. They're trying to punch it in. They have it at the Bucknell 18. Burton, who's not a really big guy, took a lot of shots right in front of me, and, and now he's going to come off the field with a little bit of a limp, but that's some toughness to continue on with that play with the shots he was taking. Minute 27 and counting left in the half. VMI after a turnover looking to score. Oh, here comes a hit! The ball is loose, and he was not passing, and the official blew the call there as DBY planted Cobb, who was not even in his motion to pass. He had just pulled back there. Kevin, you probably got a good look, and it definitely should have been a fumble. Because DBY well, was loose. I was kind of screened by DBY, <laughs> as he most of everybody on this side of the field was. Because <laughs> I'm telling you, when he came in, I just thought to myself, oh boy. Well, it's going to be an incomplete pass. Stops the clock with 119 left in the half. BMI at the Bucknell 18, facing a second and 10. Cobb, quick snap, threads up the screen, throws it to Watts. Big blockers in front of him. He'll cut it to the 15 and be dropped. At about the 13, VMI may have to take one of its two timeouts of the half as Byers brings him down, and VMI will indeed take a timeout here with 108 left, trailing 21-14. They got the ball at the Bucknell 37 after the ball was stripped uh, against Nitty. That was a good call. I, I really think, though, Kevin, there's no doubt, certainly from my vantage point, and the referee, Henry Wimberg, was very close to the play there. When Cobb went back, he was looking downfield, but he didn't even cock his arm, and DBY hit him right between the shoulder blade. Yeah, he was coming full force, and I'll tell you what, I don't think Cobb even saw him. The only thing that could have happened was he just got his hand pushed forward enough that the official thought he was throwing the football and gave him the benefit of the doubt on that one, but you're right. You know, uh, DBY came off that right corner almost untouched. And when you get a guy that big coming that fast, you better make sure that your quarterback's protected because he's going to take a hit. He did take a big lick and stayed in there and somehow got the ball away to get the incomplete pass. Now, here's the big situation for Bucknell on third and five. They get out of this giving up three. This is a big win after the turnover. But watch the near side with man-to-man -man coverage in the back of the end zone. Well, you have lined up there the 6-2 Nicholson against the freshman Johnoff. 
Wide side is to the left. BMI third and five at the Buckdell 13, trailing by seven with 108 left, coming out of a timeout. Here comes Cobb, two-step drop, looks right though, has a man, throws it over the middle. It's gonna be caught by four lines and he's gonna be twisted down inside the 10, near the sticks at the eight. He's short. Evan Byers brings him down. The clock continues, well, nope, they stopped the clock at 101 for a measurement here. Oh, they should have because I thought, I'm sitting right on the line and it is very close. Yeah, they'll get it first and wow. goal. VMI at the eight. One more timeout left for the Kedets. Down seven after the turnover on the fumble against Nitty. First and goal at the eight. And here comes VMI breaking the huddle. They'll send Nicholson now to the far side. In the slot is four lines near side. He's 5'9". And here's the big Sanders at 6'2 on the left side. Cobb under center. set. He'll have Watts behind him, some seven yards deep at the Buckdale A two-step drop. They'll throw the fade pattern right side. Amaker plays it nicely, but the ball is caught in the far corner of the end zone, and the officials are going to give it to him. Amaker played great defense, but they'll say that the official will say Nicholson was in bounds in the far corner, and VMI will try and tie this game up with a Christopher extra point. One, one foot is all he needed, and he got a toe in, and that's about it, Doug. It was very, very close, opposite side of the field from where I'm sitting, and you couldn't quite see how close he was to the line. There was one foot down for sure. Whether it was on the line or not, the official was right down on the line and made the call touchdown. That's a big, big score. Here comes Christopher trying to tie this thing up, and he just snuck it in the left upright. So 36 ticks left in the half, and we're all knotted at 21. By the way, Cobb in his first start in his career, well, he's pretty good. 17 of 26, 193 yards and three touchdown passes. Kickoff taken midway through the end zone to Regan. He's going to take a knee in. Buckdale will start at the 35 with all three of their timeouts. Coach Susan's not the kind of coach there, Kevin, that will like to go for it. But with Nitty's arm, and of course, if you had Will Carter out there, it might be different. Buckdale playing without the speedster at wide receiver, but they still have some speed in Kazlander and Brake. Those are more deceptive guys that kind of have to get downfield past the defensive backs off a, you know, a move or a juke. And, and Kazlander has been able to do that with running the routes he's been running. He runs a little bit of a stutter route or a pump fake route. He can actually beat the corner, and it could be a long pass play right here if they decide to go that route. Again, you know, three timeouts remaining 36 seconds. Normally not a down-the-field kind of guy with 36 seconds as Coach Susan. We'll see if that changes in this series. Still haven't seen Matt Del Maro since the first series. You may want to ask Coach about that. I formation, 36 ticks left. Handoff Williams. He'll find some room. Down the near sideline to the 40, to the 50, to the 45, to the 40, to the 30, and he'll get up under, undercut at the VMI. 26. You don't need a wide receiver or, or for that, Kevin. you just Kevin. run the ball off the right side and nobody looks at you. There is a huge hole. I could have hit that hole. Well, come on, Kevin. You couldn't have hit that hole. Listen, I could have hit that hole in street <laughs> shoes. That's how big of a hole it was. Now Bucknell will take one of its three timeouts. Why in the world, down the boundary, did VMI allow C.J. Williams to rumble all the way to the 26-yard line? Doug, they sold out that time completely on the middle of the field. We talked about the success Bucknell has had in the middle of the field. That time they sold out 100% on the middle of the field and didn't even worry about the outside. There wasn't any, even the corners sucked in on that one. That was a 48-yard run by C.J. Williams, and now we may see Matt Del Paro. And by the way, if you're watching on Bison Vision, we have our graphics back up again. Thanks to the hard work of Terry Burke and all the fine folks there uh, with Bison Vision. I think we have Scott McVicker working today on graphics as well, and yeah, I'm sure was part of it. And then also we have a whole host of folks doing camera duty, Jack Lawrence, Matt Binnick, uh, also Andrew Andre Chick, Krista's out there, Kristen Holman as well. So at the 26, 23 ticks left in the half, 21 all is the score. Bucknell could go with a couple of passes here, maybe even a couple of runs with two timeouts left. We'll see. Del Mar, I believe, back at running back. He is as Williams tries to get a breather here. Nitty in the shotgun with three wideouts to the left side. Play clock at 12, Nitty takes a snap, under pressure, steps up, throws it, man is there, it's going to be complete, complete, inside the two, down to the one, another big grab by Hartman, as the former wide receiver turned tight in, gets another big mismatch there, and he pirouetted that time, Kevin for the catch. Inches from being able to lean that one in for a touchdown, 
I'll tell you what, the way these last three to five minutes have been played by both these teams, coach, the defensive coordinators have to be beside themselves right now. There have been open receivers, open running plays, and now you're looking with 16 seconds to go. Bucknell still has one timeout to go and only a yard for a touchdown. This opens the door to a whole lot of different things. Again, as I mentioned, Del Mar, I believe back in that play, Watch for maybe a play fake to him. They maybe try and hit one up the middle right away, then maybe a play fake to him if it doesn't work. Jake Hartman, of course, the senior, former wide out. Now, of course, he is a tied in, but boy, he, he causes a lot of mismatches. And let's see here if uh, Del Maro is in the Bucknell backfield. No, it's gonna be Williams, the big guy. And He's got uh, a blocker in front though. That's Kareem Hyman, the fullback at the one. Trying to break the tie with 16 ticks left is Bucknell. Play action, they're looking for Hyman. They'll throw in the end zone, it's tipped and caught by Hyman. They'll say he was out of bounds. The ball was intended for Kelly on the far corner of the end zone near the out of bounds area. He bobbled it up in the air. Then Hyman, diving under it, tried to grab it. He did, but I guess they said he was out of bounds. So clock stops with 11 ticks left at the one. It's second and goal by Isaac. That was one of, the, I thought maybe that would be the second play in the series, but you could see the play fake drawing the linebackers in. Only the uh, one outside linebacker was able to make coverage on the tight end. I'm in a fullback handoff. Williams, big hole. He will burst over for six. Touchdown! Your Bucknell Bison. Williams went behind the big right guard of Nevin Hagman and right tackle Rami Cassett. And that would open up a huge lane, wouldn't it, Kevin? Wow. I mean, the entire right side collapsed in, and he could just lean into the end zone. I think he literally could have walked in, but he decided to lean in just to make sure he crossed the plane. And with seven ticks left, you don't give VMI a whole lot of time to try and answer the goal. But they'll trying to go up by seven with another Mauer extra point. Snap good this time. Hold good. And the kick is good. It's 28-21 Bison, and Bucknell, Kevin, able to go four plays and 65 yards, and C.J. Williams was a huge part of that drive, wasn't it? Well, you know, Doug, we, we talked about how conservative Coach Susan would be. The run to the outside was a very conservative call. When it's that successful, then all of a sudden you're like, okay, with about 35 seconds to go, we could take a couple of more risks. Here comes Maurer with the kick. He'll boot it. Inbounds this time, and it will be taken by Stout for VMI at his five. Up the middle to the 10, to the 15, it'll be swarmed and dropped at the 20-yard line. Leading that charge defensively for the Bison is Mark Piles, and VMI will have it at the 21, and with two ticks left in the half, I'm sure they will just take a knee here, and it's been a very entertaining first half, if nothing else. Boy, no question about it. I mean, the last three, five minutes have been the strangest three to five minutes I think I've ever seen in football, Doug. <laughs> There's been almost as much scoring there and that's as in the high school football game last night. <laughs> <laughs> you called a good one right here at Christie. 41 points in that game in the entire game. I think more of them were scored in that last three-minute span, it felt like. <laughs> Looks like VMI going to go into the victory formation here. We'll see. Well, they, they go in the eye, so Cobb, who's had a terrific first half, is going to go with a draw. And here is Watts, break a tackle and circle back around to the 30 and then finally be dragged down to the 34, and that will end the half. And Kevin will speak with head coach Joe Susan here once he tracks him down. Welcome back once again here to Christy Matthews at Memorial Stadium. Second half kickoff just happened, and Brian Reagan took it from his end zone up to the 20, actually 24-yard line. First and 10 Bison. They'll move left to right to start this third period of play here at Christy, and the tackle was made by Lipscomb for this VMI team. Bucknell in the home blue, all blue uniforms, jerseys and pants, and VMI in the white jerseys the gold pants gold helmets beautiful i love the interlocking red white and yellow vmi on their helmet logo 
Here's a handoff to Delmaro who started the game for Bucknell and had a great first series this time on first and 10. He'll gain a couple of yards before being ushered to the field turf surface by the linebacker for VMI, Miller Williams. He is second and eight for Bucknell. Matt Delmaro had a really nice first half, four carries, 78 yards and a touchdown. That gives him a 19.5 average per catch. But when you figure 50 of them were on a touchdown, you just kind of don't say that as much because 19 and a half a carry sounds much better. <laughs> Offset eye behind Nitty, who is under center. Brandon Noblet, he'll go back to pass with a play action. He's hit as he throws. He'll go downfield on the right side. It's going to be complete. Pulled down by break as the Texan, who had a touchdown grab in the first half, gives Bucknell a first and 10 at the Bison 47 as he outleft Damia Jones. Well, it was a great catch, and I don't want to take anything away from it, but Nitty had an outstanding poise in the pocket there. He knew he was going to take a hit and he went and delivered the ball. It was a little bit high because he had to throw it over the defender, but he took a hit in the process. Nine for 14 coming into this half, 182 yards and two touchdowns for Nitty. That's a really nice first half. No uh, doubt about it. He did get that fumble that VMI turned into a touchdown. They tied things up at 21, but then came back and got that uh, drive going, including a long pass to uh, run out to Williams. Here comes Del Morrow on a first and 10. He'll take it left to right, gain a yard or so to the Bucknell 48. And then after he was tackled, a flag in the middle of the pile. And we'll see what Henry Winberg, our referee, has to say about that. Bucknell in that first half in terms of penalties, not penalized too many times. Offensively, I think they may have only had one offensive penalty, but they ended up with a boatload of defensive penalties as well. Is this one going to be a hold? Move the ball back inside the Bison 40 at the 37. I haven't been four penalties for 45 yards before that holding penalty right there. You know, that's one of the adjustments I think VMI has made very well in the second quarter. They've cut off that play in the middle that has been very successful, but again, the outsides have been open for Bucknell since that. On the wide side, the right side, three wide outs. Nitty going to pass, throw it. No, he pumps. Now he throws it late, and there's going to be flags on this, maybe. Nope. Threw it over the middle to Kaslin, who's asking, pleading for a flag at the 37. He was grabbed from behind, I guess, as the ball got there by the linebacker, Logan Stive, the Midlothian Virginia Redshirt senior, who started nine games last year and nine tackles versus Bucknell as well. It was a really close play, but there are two things in the determining factor there. The timing, obviously, of the hit, but also did the referee think that that ball was going to be catchable even if he wasn't bumped into? And that might have been the thing. It was a little bit high and a little bit long. So it's second and 20, Bison. Of course, that hold put the ball back at the Bucknell 37 after Brake's long catch. Now here's pressure off the corner. Nitty trying to set up the screen, but it's taken away, and he had to throw it long, and it's up for grabs at the 45, and it will short hop to a defensive back, the strong safety Robinson for VMI. If he would have been able to catch that clean, he probably would have scored. That was a play where Nitty probably should have just tucked the ball and ran. Well, either that or if he's going to throw it, make sure he throws it to the sidelines and not to the middle of the field. Del Morrow had no chance of getting that screen pass because of how high he had to throw it to get it over the defender. That's one of those that should have been probably thrown out of bounds. He'll see that make the adjustment, and again, that's part of the growth process. Well, it's a third and 20 years, so Buckdale may want to try and play it safe. Maybe just put this one away, but who knows? Two wide outs to the right side at the Bucknell 37. 20 21, Bucknell in the lead. Nitty under pressure, and he's going to be sacked for the first time today. Really, the second, I guess the first, he fumbled the ball, and good pressure by the defense that time of the backup lineman for the uh, B. Mike. That's, uh, excuse me, uh, Joe Nelson. Nelson came in there and was able to grab him. I have him at number 98, but they say he's wearing number 99 here today. And the good thing was Nitty held on to the ball here and it'll be a punt by Derek Mauer. That's one of those though that he'll develop into it. There's a clock in your head as a quarterback and that one ticked one, tick too many. You only have about three, maybe five seconds with good protection. That was more in the five and a half, six range. Here is Maurer with a short kick taken by four lines at the 31 of VMI. Made the first man miss. Here he comes to the 35 to the 36. Then he'll be dragged down at the 36 by a backup wide receiver there. And that is Brandon Farrell. Doug, I have a couple of scores for you to pass along. 
Holy Cross in the third quarter leads Albany 13 to nothing on the road in Albany. Fordham all over St. Francis 24 to three. That game now in the third quarter in the Bronx. Just starting the third quarter. Actually, now a, fi a final, I should say. Ball State 30, Colgate 10. Georgetown losing to Wagner at home 21 to three at the very famous multi-purpose field. Here it's 28-21 Bison VMI with its first offensive series of the second half. 12-21 left in the third quarter. They'll have it at their own 36, moving right to left. Cobb has almost 200 yards passing in his debut. Back to pass here, as all day. Now we'll throw it down the far side, or near sidelines, bobbled by Burton, but he'll grab it in the field of play and race up to the Bison 35-yard line before being pushed out of bounds by Steinbeck. And whatever Coach Susan said his team needed to do in terms of uh, personnel, it didn't work that time. A great find, and Burton was wide open. Well, that looked like somebody missed a coverage in that one because he, he comes right in the seam behind the corner and in between the corner and safety, and I think there's a little bit of confusion on who's supposed to have that particular receiver there. After this play, we hope to take a station identification. We'll put Sarah Lagerman on the alert. First and 10, VMI down by a touchdown at the Buckdale 35. Here comes a delay handoff. This is Turner this time. He's going to be sliced down behind the line. Loss of one. Taglianetti, the free safety, came in on that run blitz. Couple uh, other. Well, let's take a 10 seconds for station ID. 10 seconds station identification. You're listening to Buckdell Football. Doug Birdsong, Kevin Hurd, Christy Matthews and Memorial Stadium. Our director, Terry Burke on Bison Vision, along with Scott McVicker on graphics. Second and 11 at the 36. Hand off right to Turner to the boundary, and he'll gain back to the line of scrimmage, and then he'll be snowballed under. Coming in there is Robert Naylor. First time we've called his name. He got the start today. Evan Byers also and didn't have defensive stats from that first half, I don't believe. But, uh, yeah, we do. Byers had eight tackles. He had 19 against VMI last year. It's going to be third and nine. Keita is down by seven with 11 minutes left. We'll have it at the Bucknell 34. A couple of more quick scores late in the fourth quarter. Now Buffalo leading Duquesne by a score of 38-28. That was one of the more interesting games. And at the half, Morgan State, Eastern Michigan, all tied at 21. Here it's 28-21, Bison. But Cobb in the shotgun with a corner blitz. He'll throw it downfield. And Kind of mistimed things with Burton on the far sideline. And then a late flag in the backfield, and Cobb touches the bottom of our referee, Mr. Wimberg. Well, I think that was a thank you for noticing. <laughs> or a thank you for throwing the flag <laughs> well, when you noticed I mean, or not. Yeah, that, yeah that's, what I'm, that's what I'm referring to. It's in the backfield of VMI. <laughs> Crowd doesn't like it, a personal foul, roughing the passer, another defensive penalty on the Bison. That's gonna move the ball instead of fourth down and nine. As you see Coach Susan on Bison Vision not being too pleased with that. It'll be first and 10, the fourth first down via the penalty for the Kedets, move the ball to the Bison, 19. And these have been expensive penalties, not five yarders. Not at all. Here is Cobb under center Doucette. He's going to go with a handoff right to Turner. He'll break it free to the near side. Skip past a man at the Bison 10. Carry tacklers inside the five and finally be dragged down at the three yard line. What a hard run for Sorry, Turner, who is six feet, 210 pounds. The senior from Wakefield, Virginia. Good look of him on Bison vision there. Puts VMI down at the four, they'll say. 28-21 Bison, but. VMI on the doorstep again. Bucknell needs a turnover here. They got so many turnovers last year. Over the last three years, Bucknell has forced 82 of them, and they have had at least one interception in 26 of 33 games, including last year. Four second half turnovers made a big difference, but right now VMI going to take a timeout. Wow. 10-12 left to play in the third. 28-21 Bison when we return first and goal VMI. Right now a break. This is Bucknell football from Learfield Sports on Eagle 107. First and goal at the four, handoff up the middle. Turner fights for VMI down to the doorstep. He's still pushing forward at the two. He'll be finally dropped, it appears, at the Bucknell one yard line. Dylan McDonald in on that stop along with Taglianetti, but Turner, who has been the thunder after the lightning of Watts in the first half, he has really staked this VMI team down 
It's going to be second and goal for VMI at the Buckdale one down by seven, looking to tie things up in the third quarter. Quickly, here comes a straight eye formation with three running backs behind the quarterback. Cobb, handoff, Turner, he dives, he spins, and he stops short. So it's going to be third and goal right now. That's an entertaining formation. It's a triple I. Uh, you call it a full house backfield. It's it's uh, it's set up for a dive play. But when you get two guys to block in front plus a line and you can't make a yard, that's a that is an outstanding defensive surge. BMI had to take one time out earlier. Now Cobb has to run over the field to get the play call. It's not like there's a huge, deafening, roaring crowd here. I'm not sure, but the play clock still has 13. Third and goal, VMI at the Bucknell one, trying to pull within one point of the bicep. Here's a handoff, Turner, no, a fake, and Cobb all alone oh, scampers wow. in for six. He faked it to Turner left, and then he rolled out right, and he has his first rushing touchdown of his young career after three scoring Pass touchdowns in the first half, and now VMI within a Christopher extra point of tying things up. Doug, that is the definition of a beautiful fake. He faked out the defense, the broadcasters, no, the stadium. No, he didn't fake me out. I knew he was you, doing it. Maybe you. You were looking at the dive play for a minute. I saw your eyes. About a tenth of a second, I think. <laughs> you. It, it'll be shown on video, I promise you. Here comes the extra point by Christopher, and again, he does get it through the uprights, but just barely. It's good. 8.53 remaining in the third. We're all tied at 28 now. Am I in Buckdale? We'll take another time out. This is Buckdale football from Learfield Sports on Eagle 107. And they play 66 yard drive for the VMI Kedets and with the one yard run by Cobb. The redshirt freshman has given this VMI team with the extra point a tie game 28 all. Doug, that was an absolutely beautiful fake. I mean, he puts the ball right in the belly, just pulls it out, uses his left hip to shield the ball from the defenders and goes around it. I don't think there's anybody in blue that actually even looked at him for a more than a half a second at best. Well, Bucknell going to have to answer the call again. They did in the first half. Bucknell, if you just tuned in, Actually jumped on top of VMI, 14 nothing. Kedets tied things up with two straight scores, 14 all. Then Bucknell went back on top, 21-14, then it was 21 all, then 28-21 at the half. Now 28 all, and here's another deep kick by Christopher at a VMI record 52 yard field goal against Bucknell last year. And he also kicks off and Regan will take a knee and another first and 10 upcoming for the Bison. 28 all game and they'll have it at the 35. One thing I noticed is the last two or three kicks have gone into the end zone. Regan has stepped in and taken a knee. You remember that one he took, he, he actually ran out and only got about to the 15, 18 yard line. I remember a couple of, I think it was last year or the year before, you started at the 25 yard line when you take the, the when you take the knee. And that's something that a lot of these players really need to remember. I know you want to make the big play, but sometimes the knee at the 25 yard line start is the best option. Williams in there at tailback, first and 10 Bison moving left to right towards the closed end of Christie in a 28 all third quarter game. At the 25, Nitty goes handoff left. That's Del Maro will cut it from the left back to the right, and he'll gain about five yards up to the 30, 31. What was that, CJ? That was CJ Williams. It looked like the way he was running, it was Matt, although CJ much bigger than Matt, and the defensive stop made by Francis for VMI. It'll be second and about five. Well, CJ has those quick feet. He hits the hole really, really quick, and then is able to slide to the left and right, and that's what he did right there to actually get an extra three more yards. RJ Nitty getting the start here today. The red shirts. No, no red shirts in Patriot League. The freshman a year ago, up to his sophomore year and looking pretty good. We'll go with the handoff on second and five to Williams. Williams in the crisscross handoff will crisscross his way for a first down run. He went right to left, Kevin, and then burst free to the Bucknell 40 and be dragged down there by Nelson. And it's a first down and 10, orange and blue. 28 all game, eight minutes and counting left third period. Little jab step to the right, that gets the linebackers watching you instead of watching the blocking that's happened in front. And that opens the hole up on the left side of the guard tackle gap. And then he's able to actually, as you said, cross over and make that hole and make that first down run. Buckdell has 129 rushing yards to this point in the game, VMI 62. Here's a good play action by Nitty. Now he will go deep against double coverage. Break gets bumped as he'll throw his body down inside the 20. Can't come up with the ball and the crowd getting the boo birds out. 
Elijah Robinson, the strong safety, saying no way. That was a good defensive play there. But I tell you what, I think before long, Bucknell's going to get that call. You know, that's an interesting play call because right now VMI is selling out on the run up the middle. They had eight guys in the box that time and one pass pattern, one receiver in the pass pattern who was double covered. I'm thinking that play sets something up uh, down uh, down the line here a little bit, Doug. Coach Susan never has trick plays, does no, he? No, no. Uh, misdirection, we'll call it. Second and 10 at the 40, run blitz upcoming. But there's a big hole to the right side. Here's Williams spinning his way to the Bucknell 47, finally being upended at the Bison 48 by the big guy, Joe Nelson, nose tackle. The run blitz came to the right side defensively, and Williams ran to the right side offensively, and that's why he gained eight. It's third and two Bison in a 28-all game against VMI, seven minutes left in the third. A couple of scores to pass along. There were finals from earlier today. It was UAB over Troy, 48-10. North Dakota State wins over Iowa State 34-14. 25th consecutive victory for North Dakota State. That's an FCS record, and oh yeah, they beat an FBS team second year in a row. Third and two, here comes Williams breaking it free. Down the near sideline, to the 30, to the 20. Gets a great block by Kaslander that'll spring him inside the five. He'll be dropped down at the one yard line. Bobby Kaslander running foot to foot, step for step, stride for stride with C.J. Williams. He got a block at the last second and then stride, brought down Williams. They'll say it, the VMI three. Kaslander smartly gets an angle in where he gets his head in front of the defender because it's very easy to make that block from behind and get called for it and all of a sudden that run goes nowhere. The beautiful part of that is that is almost the exact same setup we saw in the scoring drive that was set up uh, right before the end of the half. Buckdale breaks the huddle with just six on the play clock. First and goal at the three, 28 all game. Buckdale trying to break this deadlock. Williams will do so. He burst up the middle for six. Touchdown! Your Bucknell Bison, C.J. Williams with his second rushing touchdown of the evening. Doug, that's the big guys up front. Not to take anything away from C.J.'s running, but that's the big guys up front in that whole series. They were blowing VMI off the football three and four yards down. There were VMI down linemen, defensive linemen, four yards in the end zone in that play. Eric Mauer, Eric Mauer trying to get Bucknell its 35th point. And he'll kick it to the uprights to our right, and it is good. With 6.17 remaining in this one, Bucknell vaults back on top of the key debts, 35 to 28. Does Bucknell this scoreboard go to, to hundreds, by the way? I'm, I'm just a little concerned right now. Well, I'm concerned it may break. <laughs> I mean, this scoreboard, the guy who created it is dead, so I don't know. <laughs> when was the last time there's been this many points on this scoreboard on either on both sides of the ball? Wow. Yeah, I'll tell you what, this uh, Bucknell offense looks strong. Unfortunately, the defense may not quite be as strong as what it has been under Coach Susan here in the past. We'll see. Uh, that was, by the way, a six-play and 65-yard drive as the Bison take the 35-28 lead. And it's time right now for the service first Federal Credit Union trivia question answer. Bucknell trailed VMI at the half, if you may remember, but burst forward with 28 second half points and a 35-23 victory last year down in Lexington, Virginia over the Key Dets. What keyed that? How many turnovers did the Bison force in the second half? There were four turnovers. Three of them were fumbles and one interception. Do I get to go to the bonus <laughs> round for going over and above? <laughs> no, because you looked into the media I guy. I didn't to need out. them. I did the game last year. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> that is correct. And Service First Federal Credit Union has the answers to all of your financial needs. Doug Birdsong, Kevin Herr with 6.17 left in the third. 35-28 Bison. Can Buckdale's defense come up with another pick like they did. They had a couple of pick six in the last year. Yeah, and, and you know what? This is a defense that has been ranked in the top ten uh, in the nation. This one's a kick that's going to bounce out of bounds again by Maurer, and he was trying to squib it downfield, but I think you want to squib it in the middle of the field, not yeah. towards the sideline, although I know you have plays set up trying to get your coverage to him and in on the sideline, but now it's first and 10 VMI, and it's 35. Well, that happened one other time in the first half. He came over to Coach Susan, and when they were talking about it, and you see it now again on Bison Vision, uh, you can see him talking a little bit. There's a pat on the head. I, I think you're 100% correct. That is a set kick to go in a certain direction, and it may be one that he's just not comfortable making and can't get the footwork on. It, it just doesn't look comfortable coming up to the ball when he's trying to squib it to that left side. 
Well, Cobb comes up and he's looked comfortable here today. Kevin, 230 yards passing today for the redshirt freshman making his debut for Sparky Woods and VMI. At the 35, handoff right, this is Watts. Watts will catch the corner, get tripped up as he'll cross the VMI 37. Byers again got a hand on him and Evan Byers, preseason third team All-American, he's showing why he is just a outstanding guy. You went down the field there near the end of the first half. It's very muggy out there, isn't it? It's very, very humid. And one of the things that you can credit the training staff on both sides of the ball for getting these guys ready. We have not seen, knock on wood, one single cramping issue and that is a great hydration and a great job by the training staff to keep them hydrated through this game and something you have to start really the beginning of the week absolutely of at the 39 second and six vmi delay handoff wads he'll try right side and he'll get stood up and try back left and game back right and he'll be dropped at the 40 gain of one it's going to end up being a third down and long dby on the stop there and you know, they're expecting a lot out of Demetrius Baldwin Young Blood. You know, he expects a lot out of himself, too. I mean, he, he's a very driven individual. He knows he's going to be the key of this defensive line, and he takes a little bit of pride with that. And uh, actually, we may, I, I again, I may have had the uh, analyst jinx there. That may be our first uh, injury <laughs> due, to, uh, due to a leg cramp. Yeah, it looks like down on the ground right now is one of the linemen, Ian Roseboro, the redshirt sophomore. Yep, and he looks like they're stretching out his left leg. By the way, can mention while we have an injury timeout, the 35 28 Bucktail lead, 5 17 left in the third. The Y Center for the Performing Arts is the proud sponsor of Bucktail football. The Y Center's series offers 30 events, including world music and dance, modern dance, jazz, blues, classical, and a family discovery series. For more information, visit bucknell.edu backslash Y Center. And by the way, after the game, we'll have the McDonald's post game show, including the Fairfield Auto Group drive of the game and also the Purdy Insurance Agency player of the game. And for the first time this year and ever, it's the Middlesworth Potato Chips Crunch Time play of the game. Thanks to the fine folks at Fairfield, Purdy, and Middlesworth for their sponsorship of Bucknell Athletics. Third and four for VMI at the key. That's 40 and a half yard line moving right to left. I'd like a weekender bag right now. <laughs> I could probably finish it before the end of this play. Blitz on, here's Cobb throwing it man wide open. It's Burton, he has it for a first down and more up the near sideline to the 50 into Buckdale territory at the 46. Finally, Clay Yule brings him down, but how many times have we seen Burton for the most part, but a lot of VMI wide receivers wide open. That puts him over 100 yards for his six catches and 200 and about 50 yards receiving. You know, we talked about Bucknell's rush defense being uh, number four in the nation last year, giving up 93 a game. They haven't done too bad. They've given up less than 70 here today, but it is midway through the third quarter. 35-28 lead, but VMI at the Bucknell 46, first and 10, Cobb under center. Now he'll go with a play action. Now he'll roll to his left. Now he'll have time. Now he'll look. Now he'll be flushed out of the pocket, and he'll be dropped for a sack. DBY comes in there and plants him down at the 49 loss of three. It'll be third and 13, VMI down by seven. Oh, Demetrius, you got to have a better dance than that, my <laughs> friend. And that was, that was, I mean, I know it wasn't the sack you were looking for. You know, you kind of reached up and used that big paw. But, you know, you got to work on that dance a little bit. <laughs> DBY. Big guy out there. Certainly he's going to be shedding a lot of weight tonight, too. Wish I would. <laughs> Second down and 13 <laughs> at the Bucknell 49. VMI down 35 28 with just about four minutes left in the third. Cobb to pass again, throws it to his tight end, who doesn't normally catch passes in the Sparky Woods offense, and he'll take it to the 40. As that time, Garvin caught it, and now a Bucknell defender on uh, the stop. Uh, down there writhing in pain. We'll have to see who the injured player is. I think it's Taglianetti, who of course has gotten quite a few Marvel tough hits devices. out here. Mark Kepler, the head athletic trainer, helping him off the field right now. 35-28 Bison will be a third and three VMI. Well, Garvin put his shoulders down and Taglianetti got the worst end of that. He was right in the shoulder pad of the uh, of the tight end when he was making the tackle and, and he got driven into the turf pretty hard. Bucknell will go on the road next week at Marist, and VMI stays on the road. They'll play at Bowling Green, a 59-31 loser against Western Kentucky on Friday. At the 43rd and three in the pistol, here is a handoff. Cobb, big hole for Watts, and he'll break it for another first down. He takes it to the Bison 35-yard line before Yule brings him down, but Bucknell's run defense, which overall has pretty good numbers, they have 
allowed VMI to go nine for 12 on third down conversions. Yeah, I'm very impressed with this VMI offense and a young quarterback and a young inexperienced quarterback. They're doing a really nice job of keeping it simple, but not simplifying the offense to where it's easy to defend. Another first and 10 for VMI, their 15th of this game. At the Bucknell 34, moving right to left. Here is a handoff, Watts. He'll cut it back, leap over a man at the Bucknell 30, and be dragged down inside the 30 at the 27 by Byers and Dylan McDonald. But boy, that was a good run by Watts, who coming in uh, against Bucknell last year, rushed for 45 yards and a score on only 12 carries. And he has six on that one. It's 35-28 Bison with under three minutes left in the third, but VMI looking to knock things up for yet another time. One of the more interesting games in FBS football, Georgia leads Clemson midway through the third, 24-21. 35-28 yeah, here, Bucknell on top of VMI. Keydets, though, at the Bison 28. Draw play to Watts, and Watts has a first down and more. Gets pushed forward inside the Bison yeah, red zone from the 20 down to the 19-yard line. Evan Byers bringing him down, but... Man, oh man, this big First offensive line, I haven't noticed. You may want to check and see if number 66, Roseburg, is back out there. He went out with a uh, cramp, uh, but they are really getting a surge on Bucknell's D. He is not back out there at the moment. Uh, they actually went with, uh, looks like Reed out there for a few plays. At the 20, another first and 10 for this VMI team, down seven, but they're on the march again. Moving towards the open end of Christie. Good play action by Cobb. Now he's rolling right, throwing man wide open, and he throws in too far inside the Bison five. Sanders reaching out for that one. Couldn't come up with it. Steinbeck providing coverage, but to be quite honest, Sanders was open if the pass would have been on target. And for the most part, Cobb has been today 19 of now 29 for 230 yards and three passing touchdowns. Actually, Doug, I'm going to correct that. The backup center, Bradley Hahn, is the one uh, now moving to left guard for the key debts, and he's done a nice job so far. Well, let's see, it's a second and 10. Buckdale can't seem to stop VMI on third down. It's second and 10 here. Cobb pump fakes, goes deep, man wide open. It's gonna be over his head, incomplete. Four lines at the Bison, two was open. Pass a little too high, and I think he mistimed his leap. And now another defensive back injured. It's the freshman, John Ob, and he's reaching for his left knee, and that's not good. As the key debts around perfect on third down plays. And my stat monitor has gone down, so I can't tell you exactly what they are, <laughs> of course. Okay, here comes the quarterback, Cobb, at the 20, third and 10. Cobb back to pass, he will step up in the pocket, now a throw, man wide open, touchdown, VMI. Four lines broke free of Steinbeck, and Cobb, give him credit, he used enough with his, moved enough with his feet to break free of any pressure. And four lines wide open. And once again, VMI within one point of tying this game up. Uh, again, Doug, that was another coverage issue. Uh, somebody that had him didn't make the right read and nobody covered him to the back corner of the end zone, whether it was the corner or safety. Somebody had to have him and nobody ended up having him. Cobb making a whale of a debut here the redshirt freshman is fourth touchdown pass but most of the guys could catch those if you're wide open kick, kick is good by Christopher with 143 left here in this third we're now tied at 35 BMI and Buckdale knotted up at 35 we'll take a break this is Buckdale football from Learfield Sports on Eagle 107 11 blaze 65 yard drive with 143 left to play here in the third it is officially a shootout at Christy Matthews Memorial Stadium as the freshman Al Cobb, redshirt freshman, making his first start, but the Tennessean looking like, well, I don't know, uh, somebody wearing a coonskin cap. He's got a musket in his <laughs> hands. It may not be Daniel Boone, but <laughs> he, he's uh, really shooting Kevin through the Cobb? bison. <laughs> Kevin Cobb, maybe, <laughs> out of the NFL. 20-yard pass from Cobb to four lines, four lines with his first touchdown grab here this year. He had one all of last year. And here comes the kick again by Christopher, and Riggin may return this one. No, he was backing up, so he's going to take a knee, and Bucknell will start again at its 25. The Bison, oh, will come back out here, Kevin, in a tie game. And 
you know, it just with 143 left in the third, this game seems to have hung on forever. Well, you know, I, I think that was my fault. In the first quarter, we, we ran through the first 10 minutes of play in literally almost 10 minutes, and the game has really changed completely from that moment. Now you have uh, teams, uh, you have offenses that are really comfortable throwing the football. Quarterbacks are starting to get a lot more confident in their pass route, uh, in their uh, reads, and they're getting a lot more confident in how they're attacking their opposing defense. Nitty has had a fine game passing the ball too. Williams not in there. Delmaro is at the 25. Bucknell first and 10 moving left to right. Here comes a run blitz. Passing against it though is Nitty and he threw it a little too low out in the far flat to look like that was uh, the tight end at Lebo. The run blitz was to the right side of Bucknell's offensive line. The pass by Nitty was to the left. It was set up nicely but the pass a little low by Nitty to Lebo and it's second and 10 Bison. A little tight end uh, dump off play, a little tight end screen if you will without having the blockers in front. The flow goes to the wide side of the field and basically it's one on one coverage with the tight end. That's a little bit of a touch pass and I think he tried to zip that one in a little too hard. Now we'll go into the pistol with Del Morrow two steps behind him, two wide outs to the right on second and 10 again. VMI looking to put pressure. Here's a pass out to Castlander. Makes a nice adjustment against a block by Brake. And he'll cut it inside and cut it to the 30 up to the 31 yard line, short of the first down. Jones brings down Castlander, who's had a very good game here today. Of course, Castlander last year had 22 catches over the final four games of the year. It'll be third and six Bison, 35 all game, 117 and counting third period. This is going to be a very, very crucial third down call. It's one of those mid range calls. It's not really comfortable to run the ball. Maybe you can quick get a quick uh, turnaround to Caslender in this situation. Third down and six, another blitz upcoming by VMI. One of the linemen for Buckdale got out of his stance early. First time we've seen that today. Looks like it was probably Rami Cassette. Was he drawn off? That's what Caslander is saying. VMI may have drawn him off. And of course, you, can, you, you cannot draw off the offensive offsides there if you're a defender. And that's going to be the case. That's a big mistake. Wow. Third and six, it'll be third and one. And there, that opens up your entire playbook. Now, now the whole package changes. As you see Bucknell changing their entire package and putting in a little bit bigger lineup in. Now in a third and one, you have an opportunity to run it between the tackles where you've had all that success or maybe off the left side a little bit. It looks like they're going to go kind of eye formation and a little more power to the right. It is eye formation. Third and one, handoff behind the line, and Williams, who got hit behind the line, dragged the tackler past the first down. Sticks for a first down. That was the linebacker, Stibe, and Logan, who had a great game against Bucknell last year with nine tackles, got that tackle there, but Williams carried him for about three yards and a first and 10. Doug Stein's coming from the backside. That's how quick he got into the backfield. He comes unblocked from the backside, still comes around to make the play, but not in time for the first down given to the Bison. But now, oh, I'm sorry, Doug, I was going to say, now you're going to have two good receivers to the wide side of the field with man-to-man -man coverage on the outside receiver. Don't be surprised if they take a shot. Here's a run blitz up the middle. Nitty will play action fake. Now he'll throw as he's getting hit. He'll throw it up for grabs, and it's complete! Complete, no, incomplete inside the 30. Break had it for a second, and he couldn't hold on as he hit the turf. He was going one-on-one -on -one with Jones, it looked like, for VMI. With 13 ticks left in the half, it'll be second and 10. I do like that Coach O'Connor in his first game ever as the offensive coordinator for the Bison is going deep every now and then. Well, he's showing the confidence in, the, in Nitty, the quarterback, and the young quarterback in making the right decisions. That ball just needs to be thrown a little bit more to the middle of the field, and it's a completed pass. Obviously, the defender had the deep route covered, so it has to be thrown to the middle of the field or a little shorter. Now it's second and 10, Bucknell, and there's a penalty flag stopping play again with the 11 Five ticks left. The they may actually uh, put two more seconds on the clock here, and Bucknell will get yet another penalty, it appears. All start. That's going to be on the center, uh, Noblet, and they said, Henry Winberg, our referee, said it was a snap infraction. So instead of the the, ball. Right, instead of being a 31, it'll be moved back to the 26-yard line. Bucknell, a veteran offensive line. Noblet is a senior. Hagman is a senior. Rawls is a senior. Those are the three guys in the middle. And then the outside guys, Davenport, a sophomore, Cassette, a junior. Just like VMI, Coach Sparky Woods' offensive line, a senior bunch. You don't often see that called, but you see a lot of movement on the ball at the college level uh, lately. This time, maybe he moved it back a little bit and created the false snap. 
Second and 15, Nitty under pressure, throws it, it's tipped at the line of scrimmage and almost intercepted. So it was tipped, and then did Nitty catch it or did he drop no, it? No, it, it landed in front of him. He just yeah. smartly covered it just in case. Nelson was the guy who got his big mitts on that. Nelson stands 6'3", and he's a big guy. He's the nose tackle, so if he gets up there, and who knows, maybe Noblet thinking about the mistake that he just had didn't get a good enough block. Yeah, that was, uh, that was one of those situations where you just have to applaud uh, the great job by the nose that time to get his paws up there. And that's not a small guy either. <laughs> it's not at 6'3", 265. So now it's third and 15, Bucknell. 6'3", that's with flats on maybe. Here's a run blitz, and here's a run against it. Del Maro gets hit and dragged down on a great tackle. At the 34-yard line, short of the first down, Del Maro was grabbed right around the ankles by Caleb Lindsay, the junior from Ashburn, Virginia. That will end this third period, and we're all scored or tied in the score cat column at 35. And now the VMI fans getting into it. It's the first time they've had the ball in a tie game, I do believe, and they will have it upcoming here on fourth and 13 for the Bison. First, a break for our local stations. Once again, the score, Bucktail 35, VMI 35. This is Bucktail football from Learfield Sports on Eagle 107. Well, here comes a punt by Maurer. First time he will punt it right to left, and he gets a howitzer shot. Four lines nearly bobbles it at his 20. Comes up the far sideline to the 22, and he'll be dropped. Four lines who caught one of the touchdown passes from Cobb. Dropped again by Brandon Farrell. Brandon Farrell has really looked good in preseason camp. We'll probably see him some in terms of probably see him some in terms of pass receiving sometime here in the near future as well. It'll be first and 10, VMI at its own 23, and you have stats from the third quarter. Yeah, VMI with the 85 yards on the ground, 272 in the air. Uh, the numbers that impress me are Cobb, 22 of 33, 274, four touchdowns. Not a single, um, actually, I, I don't think there, no, not a single interception. Well, here comes Cobb right now. Maybe he can get one here. A uh, handoff to Turner. Turner is going to slide past one man at the line of scrimmage of 23. Make his way up to the VMI 25-yard line before Clay Yule brings him down. They'll spot it actually at the 24. Pickup of two, second and eight. He nets 35, Bison 35, just underway in the fourth quarter. Watts with 17 carries for 75 yards. Burton, the leading receiver, with six catches for 104 yards and one of the four touchdowns. Of course, Nitty is thrown for a couple of scores as well. Second and eight, Cobb under center. Single setback is Turner. Some seven yards deep, I think that's Turner. Here comes Cobb back to pass, has time, throws it, man is open, it's going to be caught by Doug Burton, and then Burton easily tackled by Amaker at the 30. Amaker about the only veteran out there, and that's only because he's a senior. He hadn't played in terms of corner or safety or anything else. He started as a safety in his career. Um, in game action, he's been more of a special teams player, but got his first start here tonight. See Brett Berg also in there on defense uh, for the uh, for the Bison. First time we've seen him the, in the, the two years he's been a Bison. Well, they have a lot of ice on Johnov, the freshman who started at corner. Now Terry Bennett in, too, as a defensive back, the senior. Now the crowd trying to urge Buckdale's defense to step up on third and three. Cobb, back to pass, has time, under pressure. He's going to float it downfield. It's going to be intercepted, no drop at the 44, but the crowd and the team loving the defensive effort that time as making a great break on the ball on the near side of the field was Thomas Bottolas, uh, Douglasville PA player, Badolas, excuse me, I haven't called his name too much, the Douglasville PA sophomore, had his first career tackle last year against VMI on special teams, but he is playing right now, and Bucknell defense comes up with a third down stop, they haven't had many of those, well, if VMI punts the ball. That is a big, big defensive rush with three men and a coverage. Oh, low snap, snap, but a lot of time as Buckdale was setting up the return. Here's break, he gets away from one man, breaks it free to the far side, to the 50, to the 45, to the 40. He has the punter to beat. He beats him to the 10, to the five, to the two, to the one. No flags, but I see the Lone Star State shining tonight, baby. Josh Break, you are the man. Touchdown, your Buckdale Bison. Oh, 
who would replace Kyle Sullivan as the punt returner? JB will, KH. I'll tell you what, that is out and out effort. He looks like he's almost down back at the 45 yard line, finds another gear in the senior goes to the right side and goes untouched and now we'll have a hand in the seventh point of this play. Power for a big extra point. 41-35 Bison. Low snap. Placement is down. Kick is up. It's good! And Bucknell on top of BMI. 42-35 with 13.08 left. And as you said, Josh Bray got by the first guy and then broke away from two other guys and then came to the far side of the field and he was gone. Well, here's part of the problem, Doug. You talked about the low snap. Bucknell has the opportunity now to set up the return. They had a wall set up to the near side and, and actually decided to make the, and, and break the sides to go to the right side because VMI got off the ball very, very late because of the low snap. They couldn't release at a smooth time. Everything in that particular punt was off time, uh, was uh, mistimed, and all because of his worm burner snap. Well, all right, a, a turf burner. <laughs> and no worms good, in this turf. Good shot of Josh Breakett. Josh, one of the greatest guys on this Buckdell team. He's on the AFCA good hands list because he does so many things. Good works team, I should say, because he does so many things off the field. He's just a great example. Of course, he was with the Athletes in Action team down in Mexico over the summer, and he's just a, a terrific leader on this team, the senior from Flower Mound, Texas, who now with that catch, I'm sure, or with that punt return and with all the catches he has today, has to be close to 1,000 career yards as he had seven, needed 77 coming in, and you just saw on Bison Vision the Bucknell pep band doing push-ups for all the points. It's, it's going to be a long night. <laughs> it's, it's 42 now. I think the pep band has given no, up. Maybe listen, are... there's some really weak-looking push-ups there. <laughs> not, not saying I could do better, but I'm saying there might be a couple of cheaters <laughs> along the way there. Well, that's just 42 this time. Every time they right. score, they have to go through that. Here's it's the like... kickoff by Maurer. It's going to the two. It's picked up by Stout. He'll come all the way across the field, get a great block at the 15, and be dropped at the 16-yard line. Got a, just a crushing block. You may have heard the ooze, but Kareem Hyman will bring down Stout. And I think getting a bloody lip is going to be Ben Richard, the freshman linebacker out of Hurleyman, Utah. And yeah, his helmet came off, and I think he's oh, yeah. bleeding. Yeah, that, that, one, uh, that one might be a, a one or two stitches in the locker room here at the, uh, at the end of this game. Well, this has been an amazing first game of the year. These two teams, they're hitting. They are. <laughs> they're now, hitting. VMI struggled last year, of course, only winning a couple of games, but they really, I think, have a pretty good team out here. And Bucknell, I, I think, is going to be a good team. It'll be first and 10, VMI down 42-35 at the VMI 15-yard line, moving left to right. A lot of new personnel from what we saw in the first half now in the secondary for Bucknell because of the injuries. Now getting in there to this game, Channing defense. Here comes Cobb back to pass, sets up the screen to Watts. He'll take it to the far side. He'll have five, six yards up to the 21 for this makeshift secondary. Can bring him down along with Evan Byers, a linebacker. Quick update uh, in Georgia now. Uh, Georgia leading Clemson 31-21. That with 10.26 to go in the fourth quarter. Here in the fourth quarter, it's Bucknell 42, VMI 35, 12-35 and counting left in this one. Second and five, VMI. Two wide outs right, one to the left for Cobb, who has just had a whale of a debut for Sparky Woods and the Kedets. Long count now with the 11 on the play clock. He's under center. He's going to go with a pass over the middle. It's caught by four lines for a first down. The slant worked perfectly. Good timing. Redshirt freshman to four lines. The sophomore will take it to the VMI 30. First and 10, Kedets. That's their 17th of this game. Early on, East Carolina leading North Carolina Central by a score of 9-7. That's early in the first quarter. And out on the West Coast, Southern Cal leading Fresno State, inching toward halftime 24 to nothing. We have 12 minutes left in this. Neil Biger, 42-35 Bison. Been a track meet here at Christie Matthews at Memorial Stadium. Glad you could join us on the Bison Sports Network as well as Bison Vision. Two wide outs left, Cobb under center again, goes with the handoff left to Watts, he'll cut it back up the middle and he'll find room up to the VMI 35, a gain of five on first and 10. Dragged down by Anderson, Abdullah, got the start today, the freshman only played one year of high school football, but was the defensive 
player of the year in his conference in that one year. And I tell you what, again, I think Buckdale's missing Tracy Smith. He really, as Coach uh, Susan said, he just plugged up the middle. Yeah, and then that's a big body, and he always seems to know where the football is. And any time it's within a five yards of the line of scrimmage, he's always around it. Now here comes another second and five for VMI. Long count. Buckdell jumps off sides but gets back. No contact by DBY. Cobb taking his time with two on the play clock. Goes handoff left. Big, big hold for Watts. He'll cut it back to the left side. Spin away from one man. Fight for a VMI first down at the key that's 41. Hard running by the 5'11", 197 senior Dion Watts out of Powhatan, Virginia. Brought down, but after a six-yard gain, it's the 18th first down for the Kedets, and they're on the march again, only down seven with 10.50 remaining in this one. Unbelievable how many first downs that VMI has been able to convert today. And a lot of them on third down. That was a second down and five. It's first and 10, Kedets now at the VMI 41. Buckdale having lost a bunch of players already to injuries and the like. Here is Cobb, straight drop back, has time, has time, throws it, man, wide open at midfield. It's Sanders, first catch in a while for him. Late and then flag. a flag as well. And it's going to be on Bucknell. Is going to be a first down reception to Sanders up to the 46. Sorry, Doug, this might be roughing the passer. There was a late hit, and it kind of got the quarterback's hand. Yeah. Wow. Crowd really not liking that. That's going to be tacked on instead of at the 46. Move the ball inside the Bison 40 down to about the 30. Yeah, DBY that time got a hand on the quarterback, and I, it was after the play, and I think just pulled a little bit, and then the quarterback went down. If he wouldn't have had the, t uh, had the opportunity to yank on the leg a little bit, I don't think he would have seen the flag. But again, 15-yard penalties. That's about the sixth one in this game. Really, really costly for the Bison. And it's probably about the fifth one that has led to a first down. Of course, when you give a 15, it's an automatic first down. Move it to the 31 of Bucknell now, where it's going to be first and 10 VMI, only down seven with 10 minutes, and clock moving in this fourth quarter. Again, Watts in the backfield. Here is Cobb to pass. He has time. Throws it out of the backfield, and the ball... Intended for Watts in the left flat, but Watts turned to his right. The pass went to his left incomplete. It'll be second and 10. Yeah, that's something I thought we'd see more of uh, with the uh, new quarterback and not in sync with his backs and receivers. That one was just uh, one person, one player was on one play, the other was on the other play. Cobb, the first VMI quarterback to make his first collegiate start in a season opener since way back in 2003, was 11 for 21 in the spring game finale scrimmage if you will 151 yards and a score he has four td passes today at the bison 31 it's second and 10 stretch handoff right to watch he'll cut it back with a big hole he'll have it down to the bison 25 and close to a first down he'll be stopped at the 23 yard line put his headgear down and was dropped i think by buyers again but that'll be a third and very close to a first down third and two for VMI. I'll tell you, this Bucknell defense, which has been stellar against the run the last three years, really struggling here in this second half, especially with the uh, run between the tackles from this VMI offense. Bucknell got a big third down stop last time. Let's see if they can do it again. The crowd expecting it here. Double tied in alignment for VMI. Play clock down to seven. Crowd making noise. Wide outs to both sides. Third down and two. Play clock at three, at two, at one. The play clock is at zero. No flag. Hand off to Watson. He stopped anyway. Should have been a flag. Maybe it'll be better for the Bison as it's third and one. Now it's fourth and one as Terry Bennett, who is a backup corner at safety, helps to make the stop here. I would be surprised if they did not go for it here. Boy, that play clock was down to zero when Cobb had his snap. Officials weren't looking at it. And now they'll say no gain, so it's fourth and two at the 23. And it's the first time VMI has gone for it on fourth down here tonight. They were good on fourth down conversions last year. Play clock down to eight. VMI has two timeouts remaining. Down 42, 35, 8, 30 left. Play clock to three, to two, to one, to zero. They just got a snap. No flag. Here's a pass. It's going to be complete for a first down or very close at the 20, or was it incomplete? Well, now the officials are discussing. It looks like he might not have had possession of that when he went down. The near side official says it is a catch. 
And it's grabbed by Jacob, the tight end again. They don't normally use those inside the 20 at the 19, but again, I'm looking at the play clock, Kevin. It was at zero before they snapped the ball. Yeah, it, it's one of those that uh, the back judge has the stopwatch, and his stopwatch may have been a half a second different. Now it's first and 10, VMI on fourth down conversion. They get it to the 19, two wide outs left. Kedet's under eight minutes left in this one. Play clock down to two. Snap, handoff, Watts. He'll try the boundary right. He will get up into somersault and under. That's Turner this time, not tw two, but 21. As Bennett again helps out on the stop along with the Orange and Blues, Anderson. Be a pickup of two, second down and eight, and VMI using the clock very nicely. They do have two, two timeouts left, and they're only down seven. They have answered the call nearly every time Bucknell has jumped on top of the Bison on a 55-yard punt return by Brake. Gave Bucknell the seven-point lead. Well, if you remember, Doug, they took that timeout early yes. in the second half. That could be costly in, in a game that whoever has the ball last wins. At the 16, second and eight, Cobb in the shotgun handoff. Turner, big hole up the middle for a moment, then it gets plugged up. And he'll fight down to the Bucknell 15. That's just about it. Uh, looked like Whitlock in on that stop along with Byers again. Byers has been on uh, nearly all of them. Robert Naylor, too, getting up a little slowly. Be the 12th play of this drive for VMI. They started this drive at their own 15 after they kick off by Maurer, remember. They have it at the Bucknell 15, only down seven with 6.45 and counting left in this one. Well, now this is a third down where we might see Bucknell take a little bit of a risk here and a calculated one, but wait a minute, we have a timeout. Our officials are stopping the clock for some reason. I don't think they had the ball set in the right spot. Now they do. Third down and seven for VMI. They've been nearly perfect tonight on third down conversions. Our ESPN.com stats have went out, so we don't know what it is, but third and seven at the Bucknell 15. Crowd getting into it. Cobb, draw handoff. Here's Watts. He'll get hit. He'll struggle. He'll be stopped short of the first down at the 12, but I think it's two down territory for Sparky Woods as Byers in on that along with DBY. It'll be fourth down in three for the Kedets, they definitely, I think, were playing for two if they yeah. needed to here. Yeah, there was no, I don't think they had any thoughts of kicking the field goal here with six minutes to go. This is a, a not, this is a difficult fourth down range when they have struggled with the running game here in this short yardage situation. They just converted one fourth down play, but. But it, it was a pass. But it was. But if Bucknell could stop them here, two timeouts could prove to be big, only having two. Excellent point. Fourth and three, watch the single setback. Here is Cobb at the 12 of Bucknell. Play clock, it's gone! The play clock down to zero, and VMI saw it and took a timeout. It was at zero forever. No, delay no, of game! Didn't, they the didn't officials get it. finally saw it, Kevin! No, they didn't get it because um, actually, <laughs> I think there was a, Evan Byers turned around and said to the official, hey, wait a minute, that's the clock. And then if the flag got thrown right before the timeout, and there's that's a, a big one. It is, that means it's fourth and nine. Now back. it's field goal time. That's right, Christopher who hit a 52 yarder against Bucknell, now is going to be trying a 34 yarder. Pull VMI within four, 533 left. Spotted at the 24, left footed kicker, placement down, it's winding to the goal post to our right and it splits the uprights, good. That's a win for Bucknell. 525 left, a 34 yard field goal. By VMI's Christopher, and it's now the Bison up by four, 42-38 now. VMI only has two timeouts left because they burned one, as you said, in their first offensive series of the third quarter. Bucknell, if they can run this clock down to two minutes and then force VMI into calling their timeouts with a first down, they would, I would think, be able to run away with a victory here. But you got a little ways to go, 526 left. Leading by four, that's big because it's a four-point game. A touchdown would beat you a field goal would. Doug, this is a situation right now where it's first down to first down. This is how you win this game. This is called putting the game away. You know, Coach Susan talks about that with us time and time again. We need to learn how to put a team away. Well, now's your opportunity if you're an off if you're the offense for Bucknell, just get one first down, then work the series to the next first down, then work the series to the next first down. Also, a nice return wouldn't hurt either. Indeed. See Coach Susan talking to his special teams. Big thing you don't want to do here is make a mistake and another big penalty. 
let's say you do get a decent return. The last thing you want to do is have a block in the back or a holding penalty where you're marching it back to the inside the 15 or the 10 yard line and then all of a sudden struggle to get it out of your own end zone and give VMI another opportunity late, late in the ball game. 42-38 after the 34 yard kick by Dylan Christopher. 13 play 71 yard drive after break. Gabe Bucktell, the 42-35 lead on the 55-yard punt return. Here's the kick by Christopher and halfway into the end zone. Regan takes a knee, so Bucktell will have it. First and 10 at the Bison 25, moving right to left here. Now with 526 left, 42-38 VMI has only two timeouts remaining, and we'll see if this depleted Bucktell defense can be stay on the sidelines here for the remainder of this game. I'm sure that's how Coach Susan would like it. You know, uh, Coach O'Connor's done a really nice job with this offense here today and called call plays really, really well and see, and ones that have put Nitty in a successful moment. This is a big series for this offense. Man is in at fullback. It'll be the pistol, and Nitty will go with a quick screen out to Caslander. Has one blocker in front of him, tries to split two defenders as break through a block and he'll be dragged down at the Bison 31. Good safe pass though by Nitty. Jones brings down Bray, or excuse me, Caslander, who's had a great game here today. It'll be second and four Bison and keep that clock moving, right? Yeah, I believe that's his uh, sixth catch of the night. And he had how many coming into that catch? Well, I have him five at the last one. So <laughs> or I mean, I, I, no, I mean, how many yards? Oh, I'm sorry. 70. I was going to say five. <laughs> <laughs> So that's six more, so 76 yards tonight. Second down and four. Nitty, here comes a pass out in the flat. It's caught by Break, and he'll fall down after knowing where the sticks were, and he stayed in bounds. They'll stop the clock, but only to move the chains. What a veteran play by Break. And by the way, the corner who was playing him over there was the free safety Alex James. Thought it was going to be a run. He started due to a run blitz. He put himself out of position there. Then he saw it was going to be a pass, but by then Break had gotten behind him, caught it, fell down for a first down, and 10 Bison at the Bucktail 39. Again, two very good calls to get that first down. You're calling high percentage pass plays five yard outs there's a little bit of a cushion right now now don't be surprised if they start to go between the tackles with this run play because they've gone to the outside so much now everybody's starting to spread out a little bit 416 left Bucknell by four here's a run blitz handoff Williams he will break it to the 41 then get dragged down VMI only has two timeouts they trail by four stop made that time by Innsminger the Chambersburg PA junior wasn't on the team last year, did catch a TD pass in 2012 against Liberty. Of course, you mentioned the Flames having a great game here today. Maybe an upset at the 41, it's second and eight. Bison with the clock down to 348 left. Yeah, things have settled down in that game a little bit. We'll give you an update here in a moment where North Carolina leads it now, 42-22. Things have settled down a little bit for North Carolina. <laughs> for Liberty, <laughs> Well. <laughs> Here it's 42-38, Bison 3.30 remaining in this one. Bucknell has a second and eight. Hand off, Williams. Williams breaks it up the middle, push the pile forward, and I think he has it up for a first down, Kevin. He's up to the 49, he's and it depends it. on the spot. He, he's got it. Move the chains. First and go. 10, Bison. You're right. That was a big surge by the big offensive line of the Bison. Well, and a nice little effort there at the end, knowing where that stick is and trying to get another extra yard or two out of it. Finishing the run forward. You can't say that enough with running backs, and you teach young running backs what that means. Don't slide left or right to worry about, an, uh, to worry about breaking one open. Get that extra two yards that you're guaranteed on every play. If... VMI holds Bucknell to under a first down on this play. Expect a timeout with 2.58 remaining, but if Bucknell can get another first down, timeouts may not matter. Here is a pistol pass right side, grabbed by Castlander. He will stay in bounds as he fights into VMI territory at the 50, dragged down at the 47 yard line by Jones over there. But actually, I think he did get out of bounds. I think oh, he got out of bounds. They stopped the clock. Oh, that's a big mistake there. I mean, I know you want to no, throw Now they're going to wind it. They're okay. going to wind it. Sorry. So uh, VMI not taking a timeout. I think I would there, 240 left. I think they're going to wait until third down here. If this play comes up short, I think you'll see a timeout come up on third down. And that's because they, they only have a timeout. Right. So now 230 left. Bucknell breaks the huddle with 14 on the play clock. 42-38 Bison here and a nail-biter to start the 2014 campaign. 
Offset eye behind Nitty at the 48 of VMI. Play clock at three, at two, he gets the snap. Hands off Williams, bursts it free! He'll have a first down inside the Keenan's 40. He gets dropped at the 37 yard line. That's a huge first down for the huge offensive line for the Bison and the not so huge Kevin Herr going to make his way down right now to talk with head coach Joe Susan. If Bucknell can hold on, they'll be singing Ray Bucknell to the masses who have gathered here at Christy Mathewson Memorial Stadium. At the 37 yard line, Coach Susan loves to put the game in his offensive line's hands and first and 10 leading by four with just 148 left. He may have done it here tonight. Nitty under center. I think Del Morrow is in a tailback. He is replacing Williams. Matt will get the carry and he'll get stopped at the line of scrimmage, cutting it right to left. Sty brings him down there. One of two remaining timeouts has been asked for by Sparky Woods and the VMI Kedets. So that will give us 138 left, 42-38 Bison. It'll be second and about 11 for Bucknell. Bison 89-39 and one in season openers, six and two in their last eight contests, having won three consecutive season openers. All have been close though, only winning by an average of five points per game. And it's a four point lead right now for the Bison. This is only the second time Bucknell has opened in the month of August. The other was an overtime win, another close win at home over Duquesne. And Tim Landis is first year as head coach, 2003. VMI seeking its first season opening win since 2010. VMI and Bucknell playing back to back. It's the first time since 1944 that's happened for the Bison and only the fourth time in VMI's 125 year history of football. 28 year maybe history of football. Last time they did it was back in 1990. They closed the season against East Tennessee State. They opened the 91 campaign against the Buccaneers, which have resurrected their football program. Of course, VMI back in the Southern Conference now. That was when they faced off against Etsu. Here at second and 11 in the pistol, Nitty. VMI one more time out. Hand off Del Moro. He'll burst it free inside the key to 30. He'll have a first down that could put this game on ice for the Bison. At the 23 yard line, Del Moro, who did it in the first half, does it on a big second and 11 there. And Matt Del Moro with that run may go over 100 yards rushing here today. As coming in, he had 81. That's going to be very close to 100 yards for him here today. And Matt's going to come off the field. Now Bucknell may go in the victory formation with 117 left now. VMI does still have a timeout to use, so probably not on this play. But at the 23-yard line, the Bison offensive line really coming up big here. Nope, they are going in the victory formation. Nitty trying to go with a win in his 2014 debut. Nitty takes a knee. VMI will use its last timeout. And oh, let's go down to Kevin Hur. What'd you have, Kevin? I, I was going to say, wow, did, did uh, Del Morrow really put his head down on that one? The impact you could hear on the sidelines and probably up into the stands, too. He just put his head down, shoulders, and finished that run and literally ran over the defender just to put an emphasis on this game. Really? Last time out taken, by the way, from VMI. Trailing 42 38 with 58 ticks left. Why don't we take. 10 seconds for station identification down the line. 10 seconds station ID, you're listening to Buckdale Football. Doug Birdsong, Kevin Hur at Christy Mathewson Memorial Stadium with 58 ticks left before Buckdale starts 2014 with a W in. While you hear the band, the pep band playing Ray Bucknell, the team would come over on the near sideline and do that. Bison in the victory formation. Nitty drops back, takes a knee, and out may well do it. Well, nope, 52 seconds left in the play clock at 38. So Bucknell will have one more snap. It'll be third down, about 14 for the Bison. And if you're watching on Bison Vision, you see head coach Joe Susan. It was a struggle down in Lexington last year. Bucknell won by 12, but much closer than what that final score would indicate. The Bison turned the key debts over four times in the second half after trailing at halftime down in Lexington, Virginia. But Bison are going to go on top in the overall, very short overall series against the key debts, two games to one. 22 ticks left in this one, Nitty has one more opportunity to take a knee, and he'll step back and do it. Now remember, remember Bucknell got on the victory formation by Fordham, a ball knocked loose on the bum rush, 
But Nitty kind of steps back away from the line of scrimmage before taking in the, and VMI doesn't go with the bum rush. And Buckdell sees the last second come off the clock and the Bison are 1-0 to start the 2014 campaign as the Orange and Blue win this one by a final score of 42 to 38. Kevin, I tell you what, Coach Susan has to be happy here. And really, Sparky Woods, the head coach of the Keydets, can't be displeased. A lot of young guys in there, particularly the youngster at quarterback, Cobb, and I thought he played a whale of a game. Yeah, I thought he did as well. I mean, they put up an offense that was not overly vanilla, but they did put in an offense that made him go into successful situations. And you know what? RJ Nitty, you take away the fumble, had a very, very good game as well, much better than the game we saw him play against uh, a Lafayette. I didn't see a lot of force passes. I saw a lot of good reads. I saw him go through his progressions. Uh, it was an outstanding job by both of the young quarterbacks here tonight. Well, the Bison team going to make their way over to the near side. <laughs> a lot of the parents and some of the 1964 team that was recognized earlier today on Alumni Weekend going to come over again. Boy, it's going to be tough to pick a Purdy Insurance Agency player of the game and a Middlesworth Potato Chips Crunch Time play of the game. I think I have a good one for that. And then, of course, we also are going to have to name the Fairfield Auto Group drive of the game. It's going to be a great one, but right now Bucknell wants to sing Ray Bucknell at the game, Kevin. Yeah, a little bit different setup this time. Uh, normally the seniors would go on the bench, but it looks like they're just kind of waiting it out a little bit as well, uh, VMI I, has a moment of recognition. Yes, VMI is going to probably sing their alma mater. Most of the academies, you know, of course, Navy and Army do that in the Patriot League, at least in basketball and all other sports other than football. Now they sing the uh, alma mater to the fans and a great contention of VMI fans. And Coach Susan realized that and showed the respect that he has for all of those and some of those guys going on to the military but now as a matter of fact doug he pointed to him and said okay guys all yours <laughs> all right so now the bison team amass in front of all their fans and here to start 2014 ray bucknell as the Bison start out 2014 as they ended 2013 with a W. Bucknell with the victory here today. It's going to win its season opener for a seventh time in its last nine tries. Improved to 89-39 and one all time in season openers. 95-32 and one here at home. And home openers, Bucknell going to win its fourth straight season opener for the first time since the 95 through 99 teams won five straight home openers. Bucknell also going to win its third game in a row between last year and now this year and its third straight home game over the last two years. And of course, moved to two and one all time against the Virginia Military Institute Keydets. Well, we invite you to stay tuned. We'll have the McDonald's post game show coming your way next. We'll have statistics, scores of other games around the United States, an interview with Coach Joe Susan and some Bison players as well. We'll have the Fairfield Auto Group drive of the game, the Purdy Insurance Agency player of the game, and the Middlesworth Potato Chips Crunch Time play of the game and more. The final score from Lewisburg, Pennsylvania, 2014 starts on the right note. It was the Buckdale Bison 42, the Virginia Military Institute Keydets 38. This is Buckdale football from Learfield Sports on Eagle 107.